What is going on, everybody? It is episode 572 of Pop Culture Crisis. My name is Brett, and I am here once again with my co-host. Would you introduce yourself, please? Hi, Crisis Actors. It's Mary. Brett is frantically putting on the green lights behind him because he forgot today again. I was gonna say. <laughs> I was gonna say before we get started. I said it felt like, uh, like you said, it was like 2:57 all of a sudden, and time just like caught up to us. Whoa! Right? Um, it's a dark day today because, unfortunately, Chinese food has been ordered to the building and it's gonna get here right about now it's so. hates us. he always orders the food like right as we're about to go live yeah it's a mind game he's playing he's trying to tell. break us he's, he's trying to break us he and wants I, us to quit i can't work under these conditions it's like frankly exploitative i kid you not she came up here earlier with like pie and i, and I was like oh is that the chinese food she goes no and the tone <laughs> she said it in was the most dejected thing i've ever heard in my entire life just immeasurable disappointment. <laughs> I've had pe I've heard people be told that their family members are dead sound less dejected than <laughs> she sounded after finding telling me that it was not in fact Chinese food that she was eating. It was truly a loss. And just you asking about it <laughs> yeah. made it worse. It was Opened like old wounds. Yeah, yes. twisting the knife, honestly. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Guys, guys, we got a bunch of stuff to get into today. It's going to be a lot of fun. Yes, I did watch the Acolyte trailer. No, I do not care. Star Wars. It's Disney Wait, Star what Wars. Is this? I don't care. Uh, it's a new trailer for a new Star Wars thing. I, I, what I is care. it? It's a, it's, a, it, it's a movie? Yeah, a show. It's a show. show not a movie. Uh, and I don't care. I just don't. So we, okay. uh, just, just giving people a heads up. We got a bunch of stuff to get into today. Before we get started, would you hit the like button on this video? And would you subscribe to this channel if you've not done so already? Please and thank you. Share this video with your friends so that more people can come in here, hang out. Uh, you know, share the video with their friends so that they can come in here and hang out as well. Remember, all Super Chats, $20 and over. We will interrupt the discussion. We will read them right then and there, and we will do our very best to get back on topic. I will, however, be following along with all of the drama that goes on with Lucas, just not us talking about it here. A lot of other people get what into drama? it. What drama? Uh, anything Lucasfilm. Okay, so George Lucas came out today and basically backed Disney in the in what's going on with Nelson Peltz and said that uh, he's on Disney's side. He says, uh, making movies, making magic isn't for amateurs. I do recommend going out and checking all that stuff out out there. Okay, so, but that's weird because he never really said anything all that positive about what Disney did with Star Wars before, but okay. Yeah, so uh, guys, uh, yeah, all that stuff is going to be good. So um, what are we going to talk about today? Well, first things first, it seems that they have found their next James Bond. Barbara Broccoli and the people over there at EN Entertainment have found their next James Bond. Uh, Aaron Taylor Johnson, you might know him as Kick-Ass, at least that was my first introduction to him, was as the character Kick-Ass from the movie Kick-Ass. Uh, but he's also been in things like Tenet. He was in The King's Man, which was the most recent of the Kingsman movies. He will be in the upcoming movie The Fall Guy. And of course, he was in the underrated movie Bullet Train, which is, I think, what ended up winning him this role. So we're going to talk about that because uh, apparently the contract will be signed next week. So we'll get into it. We're also going to talk about Sydney Sweeney, who's got some commentary on what other people have to say about her body, does she not? Yes, she's clapping back at the haters, so to speak. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Somehow she's the only person who can say stuff like that and I don't roll my eyes. <laughs> I mean, there was definitely some, you know, I'm not getting taken seriously because I'm a woman. Somehow uh, there's a couple of good reasons why I, I just seem to give her a pass on that. I'm not sure what they are. So we're going to talk about that. Also, guys, The Rock, as in Dwayne The Rock Johnson, he apparently gave a master class in how to get consent from another person while he was on the Drew Barrymore show. If you didn't know there was a Drew Barrymore show, now you do. The uh, Rock? respects women he does he does so uh we got that we got a bunch of other stuff to get into some funny stuff in the intro today so mary if you're ready we are uh we're getting ready quick today we're gonna see how quickly we can get through it all before the intro because we got two additional segments mm -hmm. so if you're ready we'll just get started you ready i'll certainly try <laughs> she's gonna do to get through it she's gonna do her best we're gonna start with some <laughs> weird shit right off the bat how about that yeah. so a bluey animator do you remember bluey we were talking about yeah. bluey last week because we were talking about how people were saying that for bluey to remain relevant, well, they have to start incorporating trauma into the show. Well, it's not about trauma anymore. Somebody's in trouble because a Bluey animator was fired because he included a cuck chair in a recent episode. You heard that correctly. I did not stutter. You did not hear something wrong. As you can see, this is the cuck chair in the bedroom of the parents, Bandit and Chili. Yes, they're dogs, but they have a cuck chair in their bedroom. 
Um, if you don't know, a cuck chair is what is often referred to in hotel rooms as the chair that faces the bed. And it's for the cuck to sit in yeah. and watch two other people have intercourse. So very recently, it's, it's, <laughs> it's funny. Okay, so like two weeks ago, maybe a little bit longer ago, some dude posted a, like some dude who travels for work. He posted a montage of all the cuck chairs and all the hotels he stayed in in the last year. It's, I don't even, whatever. I don't even think that they're placed there for that reason. It's just like, it's a chair. I don't know, but... It's yeah. where it faces, I suppose. That it's, it's like, why would it be facing the bed? I suppose it should be facing the TV. Bluey fan 786 on X posted a tweet remarking they'd never noticed an armchair in the corner of Bandit and Chili's bedroom before, and that it was strange that it directly faced the bed. Okay. It prompted hundreds of responses, some uh, more avid fans even supplying timestamps of past episodes showing the chair had not been there before. And after doing some sleuthing, the advocate has since learned that the animator responsible for adding the armchair apparently did it as a joke, believing no one would even notice, and has since been let go for suggesting that Banda and Chili are anything other than wholesome. Well, look, just because uh, a consenting pair of adults have a third party over to watch them have sex doesn't make them anything if not wholesome, right, Mary? Uh, <laughs> do you think this is real, or is this... Do you think this is a, a fake story? No, I think it's real. There's no proof provided that I, this animator actually look, got I spend canned, my life but... believing everything we look at is fake. I am taking a leap today and hoping that this is real, just because it will make me laugh. It will bring me joy. It is definitely weird it, it that they added it in later. That's a red flag. And the guy just thought nobody would notice, right? I guess not. He thought nobody would notice. I wonder who the company is that furnished. But what if there was like just one company out there that furnished all the cuck chairs and all the ho and all the hotels in America? It's That's like, probably the case. It's the, it's yeah. The, it's like their only contract is with hotels, and they just make individual chairs for individual rooms. No sets. None of that shit. Just one chair that faces the bed. But now they're they know that people are noticing the pattern, so they're changing the placement of the chairs yeah. to avoid accountability. That, well, obviously, that, that's, the, that's the problem, right? It's the it's the promotion of the degeneracy. Yeah. But now they're getting caught, so that's they're pushing a problem. degeneracy on your kids. This is why Look, we boycott Disney. We are going to be talking about this tomorrow when we in regards to Nickelodeon. It's it's nothing new. It's actually, true. It is nothing yeah. new for adults to put weird shit in kids' entertainment. Sometimes, yes, maybe because they're evil perverts who want to corrupt the children, but I imagine that there's at least a couple of them who just think it's funny and think that the adults are the only ones that are gonna get it. I imagine this bluey Ooh. animator just thought, I'm more concerned with the fact that like, Look, when these things get made, it's not like some dude's just drinking a bottle of wine and, and like hitting go on everything. They check these yeah. things when they're going through. Are you telling me that the people in charge of editing didn't notice a completely new chair in this room? This is like one of the most popular shows yeah. on TV in general right way now. Not just for kids. Yeah, way in too many levels of yeah. structure and reporting for this to just go unnoticed. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I <laughs> I uh I understand understand the excuse that you know only the adults in the room will get it or will notice it yeah. but i don't think that makes it okay so here's if that the was the intent who sits in the cut chair is it bandit or chili no, it's not. I, maybe they, they like hire in a oh, cuck to I, sit I, in the cuck chair. I think it's Bandit who sits in the cuck chair. I mean, that would be the normal arrangement, right? Yes, I do. Yeah. I think it's Bandit that does that. Uh, if we made this into a segment, we're going to get like yelled at by, <laughs> by Bluey fans. We'll be very upset. I'm with sorry, the fact Bluey that, fans. That, that, that's the way I think it is. Yeah, who knows? We'll, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll have to wait and see if it makes a reappearance. Perhaps somebody will catch it again. They move the chair to another room. Right. They get rid of it from that room. They put it in the living room. Right. In a more wholesome area. <laughs> where the, They're just so going to the, add a sex swing <laughs> in the next episode of Bluey. Just double down completely. I, I think I downloaded the wrong Bluey episode. <laughs> uh, <laughs> All right, guys. That's uh, now that we've gotten off to such a wholesome start today. Jojo Siwa. Yeah, Jojo Siwa, the ah. former Nickelodeon star, as you can what see. What in the, the she's rebranding Hunger Games Mad Max am I looking at? Yeah, this is her rebrand. She has a new song out. Uh, I, I don't know what it's called, but it has the word karma in it. Um, okay. 
and people are accusing her of copying Taylor Swift's bad phase. But there's a twenty this is a, a twenty dollars super chat here from that stands fantastic. Says, what do you mean Bluey isn't wholesome anymore? The cuck chair is about sharing oh, because no. sharing is caring. Also, mm, borax so good. Mm, bluey so good. <laughs> so good. Speaking of blue, but uh, yeah, JoJo Siwa's lyric here is, "I was a bad girl. I did some bad things." So she's going into her bad girl era. I don't know if, I think after I hate being this. a child star. This is like the we've this, never seen this before. This is like the bad girl era of millennials when they buy a house and they say we did a thing. Oh, it's just them yeah. Holding the keys. Never ever. Okay, there's two like. You should never ever use that phrase. It's super lame. It's even worse if you're a, an artist or a creative of some sort and you made something that's important to you and you advertise it with, look guys, I did a thing. I want to actually buy it from you less. I actually want to make sure that I steal it it's like from you. If they said, said okay. That. Yes. It's like that. <laughs> they said the word okay. We got a $20 from Francisco Sanchez Jr. Aaron Cougarbait Johnson will stiffen Bond like he does every other role he has ever played. He's, look, he's he's gonna be he's gonna be Bond the Cougar the Cougar Hunter. That's what he's gonna play in this. He's already playing Craven the Hunter. Now he's Cougar the Hunter. Mm, don't like that. Uh, yes. Oh gosh. And please don't ever say that phrase again. I would appreciate it if you didn't. Okay. Um, <laughs> and they can said, this, uh, can she have a, a bad girl face? I mean, I think that this is so trite and played out for attention at this point. Like, once Miley Cyrus did it, after that, we don't need anyone else to go through their bad Did you see that, uh, that she just got some big prestigious award from Disney? Like, uh, it, let me, Miley? Yeah, let me, let me look it up here. I was, I was literally just looking at this today. I didn't know that Disney even had award ceremonies. Yeah, she's, uh, what, what is it here? Which is, it's weird because she made that music video basically shading Disney. Legends. Disney. Uh, she's the youngest person to ever become like a, a Disney legend, which is a, a, a label from them. So Who Disney else is Legends, a Disney legend? Uh, these are the 2024 uh, honorees. Colleen Atwood, Angela Bassett, uh, Martha Blanding, James L. Brooks, James Cameron, Jamie Lee Curtis, Miley Cyrus, Steve Ditko, Harrison Ford, Mark Henn, Frank Oz, Kelly Ripa. So they okay. all got it. In yes. The past. So, this, so more like multiple people. No, these are these are just the 2024. Those are the honorees. nominees. And Miley Cyrus oh. is the youngest to ever win this award. Interesting. It's weird, right? Because she hasn't exactly portrayed her time at Disney in the in best a light. Of light. Yeah. And yep. nor should she. But um, JoJo threatens a rebrand. Yeah. Someone said, "Is she joining WWE? Because like it's it. giving wrestling." <laughs> It's, you know. it's giving her WWE I mean, it era. It's giving a little bit of like gold dust if the, the rest are gold dust if gold dust was blue. Mm. Blue dust. I think it's just the lighting that's There blue. was, is she fat? Is she, uh, there's a JoJo? Rest, there, was a, there was a wrestler called the Blue Meanie. She, she could definitely be the Blue Meanie. <laughs> she's, she's definitely like, you know, a little bit on the chubbier side for sure. Um, but you know, she's, she's growing into herself. <laughs> but yeah, everything I've learned against JoJo Siwa has been against my will. I wholly agree with that. It's giving Blue Meanie vibes. Oh, gosh. Yeah. 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 I'm I getting... see it. I, I definitely see it. <laughs> so... Poor Jojo. <sighs> no so... one told her this was a bad idea, did they? No, I don't no think so. No one stopped her. Well, that's the problem. You need you need somebody that's not a yes man in your group. <sighs> but the problem is, like, if you're, super, I, if you're super full of identity politics, the person who probably told her no is probably a straight white music executive. And she was like, I'm not listening to you. She looks like a young Amy Schumer. <laughs> Do you agree? Um... Yeah, I kind of see the similarities. Yeah, yeah. Somebody should face paint. Somebody should do some Photoshop and put uh, um, a bunch of face paint on. It's <laughs> like Schumer. distant, re distant relatives. Could be with Amy yeah. Schumer. All right. Uh, so there's more bad news coming up for Marvel, at least according to this somewhat anonymous source. Captain America Four has a bunch of problems, and the fan are si the fans are sick of Disney politics. Stress uh, stress cleanings, S test screenings. Test screenings said to have been held with fans didn't like the politics, the bad acting, and the lackluster action scenes. Now, granted, this insider information insider. comes from a Twitter account that has about... 200 followers. Yeah, under 300 followers. Thing is, though, I can so, believe it. They said apparently audiences were unimpressed by the film's action scenes. 
the chemistry between Cap and his love interest. However, the biggest issue was how audiences responded to the film's political content. You might think this would mean audiences found it divisive, but it, it was actually worse than that. They found it boring. I'm told that the overall feel was the political material was uninspired and unengaging. The audience found it lacked, it lacked nuance, was overly expository, and really slowed the movie down. I'm also told that while the three sequences that will be removed were a big part of the problem, the film's issues go beyond that and will likely include significant rewrites throughout, as well as adding, removing characters. I'm told Marvel really wants to keep the summer window for reshoots in order to avoid another release date delay, not just because it, it would mean vacating what they'd feel is a good release date for the film, but because, as usual, delaying this film would result in a domino effect whereby they would have to delay others. Well, yeah, that's the thing. Like, those release dates, they're not always set in stone, but there's a, a rationale but behind every release date that they choose for one of these movies, right? Uh, and I think the most worrying words are uninspired and unengaging. Like, worse than making you angry is making you bored. Because we have seen yeah. and heard that all before. I yeah. guess I haven't seen other Captain America films. Have you? Yes, I love all of them. I, I mean, okay, so... Captain America, the, the first Avenger, is fine. It's a fine, it came out in 2011, it was fine. Captain America Winter Soldier is my second favorite comic book movie of all time, second or third. And then Captain America Civil War, which is the one where they introduced Tom Holland's Peter Parker as Spider-Man, is also very, very good. Would you say that all of the Captain America movies have political themes civil yeah well yes okay so not not in so much as you would think of like american politics and also remember these are the steve rogers captain america movies not the um the ones with the the current one that anthony mackie is playing which is a different character he used mm -hmm. to be the character falcon so yes so in captain america winter soldier it's essentially a political thriller where they find out that hydra which is a, a nazi-esque organization that's been burrowed inside of shield uh, becomes known as they essentially try to take over the world. There are political undertones to that. And civil war is actually, I would say, even more of a political allegory as uh, a disaster happens while the Avengers are on a mission in Sokovia and they have to go in front of essentially the UN and they, there's basically a superhero, uh, an act to police superheroes and then the two sides are essentially those who believe that they should act on their impulse uh, on their conscience and their will right they should be able to help people when they want to and the other side believe that they believe that, uh, that there should be oversight from the government and those yeah. sides clash so there are political undertones in all of the captain america movies there are even denote uh denotions of patriotism and politics in the original film i mean it's captain america you really exactly. can't avoid that but exactly. It's weird how the UN gets cameos in so many of these things. Yeah. I mean, the UN was a big part of Wakanda forever, right? Uh, I would assume also the first Black Panther film. Uh, I don't remember. Yeah. Kind of weird. But yeah. I don't um, know. It has, a, it has a globalist vibe. But like, the, I mean, the whole point of, of Civil War, and I, and I love that movie. It's called the Sokovia Accords, and it, that's where they bring in Black Panther from that film. They make their first appearance in front of... Uh, uh, like a UN organization, stuff like that. There are political tones there, but it doesn't overtake. The theme of that movie is more about Tony Stark versus Steve Rogers and their opposing viewpoints combating each other with their, but they're also friends, right? So they feel very strongly about their beliefs, but they also feel very strongly about their friendship and that leads to tension. That's a much better sell than just making it blah, 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 whatever this movie is supposed to be and we don't know what that's going to be yet. But those movies were never boring and they were never unengaging. Mm -hmm. So this is a problem. I mean, it's they're not even calling the whole movie boring and unengaging, just the political aspects of it. But I think that they probably let the political aspects get way too contemporary and they overtook the storyline. Yep. As most Marvel films have been since, what, I don't know, 2018 is when most people would say. Yeah. Yep. So nothing new here so we'll Not have to surprising. and again 200 followers to the account who who knows whether any of this he is claims accurate. to have insider info on marvel projects yeah. so i definitely trust him yeah and sketch therapy's right it wasn't racial politics which are far more divisive in, in racial politics played a role in falcon and the winter soldier mm -hmm. so we'll have to wait and see
Uh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Let's uh, hear some input on the potential TikTok ban from James Charles. First, you have to tell me who James Charles is, because I had no idea who this person was. We've definitely talked about him before, but he is a beauty influencer and has been for quite a while now. He okay. was the first cover boy, remember? Okay. Well, well, cover girl had its first cover boy, and that's how he got his big break. It's the dumbest that I ever heard. Makes me so mad beyond belief. We are starving. People are dying. People are in jail for marijuana charges. We're in a war that we should not be in in the first place. And TikTok is our most pressing concern? I don't think so. It's also infuriating and a test to our political system that that bill got introduced, what, five minutes ago? And it was passed this morning and now it's already going to the Senate, whereas there's already all sorts of bills that take weeks, months, years and never get anything done to them. I don't think so. It goes to show if somebody wants something done, it can be done, but we love to dilly dally and make it not happen. So I'm over it. It's stupid. And it really goes to show that with this election year, you need to get out and vote and do something. Why? It's a bipartisan bill. <laughs> Like the, the first thing I said when this came up was bipartisan bills are always suspect. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's the thing. He actually accidentally made a pretty valid point toward the end there. But yeah. no one is going to listen to him because he uses this intense gay accent, unfortunately, for him. Like it's very hard but to, it's true. to take seriously when they're talking in what sounds like a caricature. But I don't think that whoever this is is wrong. Mm -hmm. Like in, in, <laughs> whoever this is. I don't know who this is. Um, he, he doesn't have a lot of credibility yeah. in his own community, so. How did he get passed? Like, so he says, oy vey, how did he get passed so quickly? That's a good question. How did it get passed so quickly when so many things seem to just lay in, uh, in government chambers forever? That is a good question. Yeah. I don't know if James Charles is the best person to raise that question, but. Exactly. Thank you, nonetheless, for your input. <laughs> All right, you're gonna have to you're gonna have to explain this story to people because this is insane. <laughs> Stan battles. Yes, as you guys know, stands on Twitter are some of the most unhinged people, maybe on planet Earth, and it turns out that recently a Dua Lipa stan called the cops on a Nicki Minaj stan because the Nicki Minaj stan flew to his house to settle an online beef they were having over their idols. Literally, there's proof. Dexerto reported on this. There's a photo of the Nicki Minaj stan sitting outside of the house with um, his, his plumber's crack showing. And this actually did really happen. So reportedly, this stan account uh, Kenzo posted his address online alongside a video prompting other stands to quote, please come to my house. You have my address um, because they're psychotic. And David Corrales, the Nicki Minaj stan, did in fact fly all the way to Kenzo's house from LA to Arizona. He pulled up in front of Kenzo's house. He posted many videos from outside the house. In one of them, uh, he said that Nicki Minaj is the queen of rap. Let's take a look at those videos. Um, are they the separate links or is it they're the in the, the, the psycho okay. behavior uh, tweet is here? Okay, here it is. Yeah, is, let's watch the first one. Stan Twitter, please <laughs> come to my house right here. You have my address. So he doxed himself. Yes. Okay. Now you should, if someone doxes themselves, you shouldn't just go to their house, no, obviously. you should not. They're it, insane for doing so, but you shouldn't also be equally insane and actually come to their house. Nicki Minaj is the queen of rap. Fuck Dua Lipa. Yeah, so, um. Who has, like, who, so this is the person that flew. Mm -hmm. Where did he get the money? It looks like he's 12 years old. Um, all of that X ad revenue, it adds up. And okay. I assume that that's how uh, David Corrales afforded his plane ticket. Bro, the idea that you would ever be <laughs> that invested in a person who will never know who the hell you are is insane. So then Kenzo confronted David Corrales outside his home, chased him around the property. And Kenzo said, you've been encouraging others on social media to attack my family over Stan Twitter drama just because I said I don't like Nicki Minaj. Allegedly, the father of the is this a generational Stan thing? account? <laughs> um, yes. Okay. Yes, because Gen Z is 
not right in the head. Uh, Kenzo's father was also present during the verbal altercation. Eventually, police were called to the scene and David Corrales was interrogated. In one clip, he can be seen filming the police and jokingly asking them if they wanted to say hi to his fans. So, uh... Cooler if he came from outside the country. He wasn't arrested. It'd be cooler to say, like, if he came from outside the country, and then when he's going through customs, they're like, what's your, uh, what's the purpose of your visit? And he's like, I'm here to pick a fight with someone who started beef with me on Twitter. And they're like, okay, valid. And then they just let stamp you through. it and let you go. Yeah, but it, the craziest part is that David Corrales was not arrested. Well, of course not. I mean, they don't arrest anyone these days. And if they do, they just let him back out the <laughs> next day anyways. That's just crazy, though. Um, and then he started uploading videos from his motel room that he was staying at. All because he couldn't accept that someone else didn't idolize Nicki Minaj. And again, we'll never know Nicki Minaj. We'll never meet... Ni I mean, maybe meet or like in passing. Maybe Nicki Minaj is going to see this story and notice him. And she's going to fly him out to one of her concerts. Bro, it's like, and it'll be a dream come true. It really does take white knighting on the internet to like the next level. Yeah, I I just honestly like why not if you just came all the way to the to his house like duke it out in the parking lot like men you know yeah but yeah. instead they were just chasing each other literally chasing each other F around on foot fist and cups yelling would have been a more uh, a better way <laughs> they said uh, a more dignified response Congress is going after the wrong app <laughs> Uh, uh, but this isn't the only Stan problem today. Yeah, uh, in further evidence that Stans are absolutely off their rocker, recently a Swifty got canceled on Swifty Twitter because she admitted to streaming the Eras Tour movie on Disney+. Plus. Now, you might not realize why it's a problem. Because it's It's Disney? because Disney is getting boycotted for donating money to Israel uh, or like Israeli nonprofits, right? They they did donate like, right, a hundred million or something, like a big sum of money to Israel. So since then, all of the Gen Zers who want to free Palestine, they put free pa Palestine in, in bio, they have been boycotting Disney Plus. And it is a sin to use Disney Plus in any capacity. We have a $20 super chat here from Corey Anderson says, I stand PCC, see you at Sheets. See you at Sheets. Uh, there seven. will be none of that from me for the week. I have uh, decided to swear off fast food in any form. For we'll see week, how long that lasts. Least. No, it's for the week. Um, the week. So it's this, I'll this keep everybody. Swifty, I'll keep everybody informed how I'm doing. The Swifty posted a notes app apology that is basically a novel. Uh, <laughs> I'm not trying to minimize my, my mistake. I'm sorry for what I did. I will always support Palestinians in their quest for long overdue freedom. My deactivation was for my own mental health and not to escape criticism for poor activism. So she said, uh, for context, for anyone confused, last night I tweeted, I'm using my parents' Disney Plus account to watch the Eras tour, so don't come for me. What I meant is the account had already been paid for, not by me. I mistakenly thought it would be fine to watch that way. I was educated quickly by people on Twitter that I was incorrect. So I stopped the movie as soon as I knew and deleted my tweets about the movie and apologized. There's a $20 super chat here from Rico Cantrell. It says, Big Cuck and Big Avocado are in cahoots. I believe it. Probably. Big Cuck chairs and Big Avocado are working together to bring about the end of the nuclear <laughs> family. You know, I just thought of this. They're mad at the Swifty for streaming the Eras Tour movie on Disney+, Plus, but they're not mad at Taylor Swift for putting her own movie on Disney+. Plus. No, of course not. That's, that doesn't make any sense to them. Why would they do that? Why would they care? They have to, they have to make concessions, right? Uh, do you mean Taylor Swift has to? No, no, no. These people have to just be... <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. They have to be conveniently ignorant to certain <laughs> things. And I think the only thing... It's like, like complaining about capitalism while typing on your iPhone. Yeah, the only public move that Taylor Swift has made since uh, October 7th, it, one way or the other, is she said that... Or no, she like showed up to a movie premiere or a stand-up comedy yeah. show that was donating proceeds to Palestine. That was earlier this year. Or to yeah. a charity of some kind. Yes. 
But she hasn't made a public statement, no. and then she just put her movie on Disney Plus regardless. She's, I mean, she is about as corporate and planned as you can get. Yeah. Like every, it just, it's every weird choice how she makes is super planned. She uh, could do something that would get her canceled if she were someone else. The funny thing is, is here she is super, super careful, super planned, super corporate. And then you wonder, well, why is that? Well, because her fans require two page notes app apologies when they watch something on Disney Plus. I even saw a think piece from a few days ago titled, I'm a Swifty, but I'm not streaming Taylor Swift's Eras Tour movie. Here's why. It's been a long time coming, but now that the Eras Tour is streaming on Disney Plus, I'm turning a blind eye to the movie. I, just because of, of Disney. a conflict going on across the globe that you know nothing about, mm -hmm. this is but the, you have to virtue signal this is on a, social media about it. A good, uh, like a, a good thought exercise for everyone would be like, maybe not for people in this group, because people here, people who watch shows like this, people who are aware of politics and treat it as the kind of inevitable force of evil that it kind of is on all sides and understand that that is true. But like, think for the people who, who do think in the black and white nature of like, free Palestine in the bio, but they've never been there, they live here. Mm -hmm. A thought exercise would be like, what would your life be like if the internet had never been existed. Imagine for a moment that you yourself, who love Taylor Swift, were able to just go to her concerts and listen to her music, buy her CDs, and do all of those things unencumbered by all of this extraneous bullshit that really doesn't have anything to do with you outside of what your humanities and liberal arts professors tell you matters. Like, imagine the weight off your shoulders to not have to be sad all the time. Like we're going to talk about it yeah, tomorrow. Yeah, we are, are going to get but into that. But this is one of those but... things where I think of it more as like, it's kind of like hierarchy of needs where it's like, look, take care of yourself, take care of those around you, focus on what you can control in the physical world and you will almost always inevitably be happier, healthier, and more focused on things that actually impact your everyday life rather than worrying about what it means when Disney sends aid to, to, um, to Palestine or to, to Israel, Israel yeah. while the U.S. government sends uh, rations Four billion to, to Palestine. So like, what does it really yeah. mean for a 20-something who loves Taylor Swift? It doesn't really mean much Nothing. of anything. And to the people on the internet, I feel like more than anything, I feel sad for them. Like I feel sad that their life is so <laughs> uh, is so burdened by these things that really do nothing but harm them and don't help them in any way. Yeah, it's about what they call your circle of care versus your yes. circle of influence. And those Correct. things should be relatively congruent mm. if you want to remain mentally stable. Unfortunately, uh, Gen Z is the least mentally stable generation. In the, in the so. chat, Clearum says, yes, Brett, imagine start singing, Gal Gadot shows up. Yes, well, as long as I don't have to, if the, okay, here's the thing, if the internet wasn't around, I wouldn't have had to hear Gal Gadot sing, imagine. So my life would still be better yeah. than it would before. Yeah, if I could go back in time, I would stop myself from watching that video. That, um, that, um, like the anniversary of that was just recently. Oh, really? I was going to send you that, but I was like, I'm not playing this on the show. <laughs> Fuck that. I'm not doing that. I would prefer the Vanessa Hudgens yes. video. All tonight. right. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, let's do cute and cringe of... Oh, no, we got Gypsy Rose. Yes, we, we do. Gypsy Rose. Yeah. Recently, Gypsy Rose Blanchard was bullied off of social media. Uh, Brett, your, no. <laughs> your camera. B Gypsy Rose Blanchard was recently cyberbullied by Gen Z and she left social media entirely. She said, real life, real life is something you can touch, something you can feel, people you can actually hug. With the public scrutiny as ba bad as it is, I just don't want to live my life under a microscope. So she permanently deleted her Instagram account and her TikTok account, which arguably she shouldn't have made those accounts in the first place if she cared about um yeah. not being scrutinized but she did did she really exist in a world before the internet like the, no up to she that level so she didn't really know i think she went to she was imprisoned in like 2012 i believe so yeah. that was kind of before it was your iPhone, anything like it is today like the iphone wasn't really super like i think the iPhone she had 4, facebook 
the iPhone 4 came out in 20, 2012 or around that time, mm -hmm. right? So you weren't really sitting with like uh, unlimited internet on your phone. when Also, she... <laughs> she was literally living in an abusive household where she was not even allowed to have free access to communications yeah. and devices. Um, if you guys are unaware, Gypsy Rose Blanchard, she's the true crime local celebrity uh, that got a bunch of attention when she was released from prison last year. And we were talking about this press circuit that she's been on. Very disturbing that the media is mining her for as much headlines as possible. And she just got this huge following um, the backstory is that she was a victim of Munchausen's by proxy via her mother, and she got into this online relationship with her boyfriend, whom she convinced to uh, murder her mother, and he did that, and they ran away together, but they were caught, and they were both imprisoned afterwards, and his, he is still in prison for this. Um, she was released last year. So after she made the announcement that she was going to leave social media, she had to issue an apology for her lack of accountability, unquote, while announcing she'll delete those social media accounts. Why? She said, I'm sorry, I'm learning. I take accountability for my part. I'm saying this right now. I'm taking accountability. I did a bad thing. Let my actions match my words and we'll go from there. I definitely have a good support system, and I think I'm just now starting to get around to listening to my inner self instead of all the noise that's been on social media. So with that being said, thank you so much for watching and hearing me out. What the hell did she, I don't get it. What the hell did she do? What was the bad thing she did? Was somebody like, okay, she's <laughs> like, I did a bad thing. They're like, what, convince a guy to murder your mother? No, no, I, I told people I was going to delete social media. I, I think that they're saying she lacks accountability for the murder. However, I think that going to prison for what you did is definitely <laughs> paying your debt to society and I think that people... she has always been relatively consistent in mm -hmm. saying that she regrets what she did and that she loves or I guess loved her mother and that she wishes she hadn't escaped her abusive situation in the way that she did. Well, just remember now, uh, Gypsy Rose Blanchard and some random Swifty who had Disney Plus are both learning mm -hmm. and, and learning, growing, doing better, and et cetera, doing et better because they made mistakes because yeah. ultimately their desire is to bend the knee. Like I would rather somebody's like, I'm not learning shit. Screw you. <laughs> So then someone said, imagine walking out of prison and getting told by a bunch of 16 year old bisexuals that you need to be held accountable. Seriously. Like this chick literally just got out of prison for what she did. She obviously did take accountability. And I think the disturbing part of her press circuit was that all of these media outlets were trying to get her to celebrate what she did. Yeah, make light of it. And make light of it. And, yep. and they were just being really discompassionate toward her mm -hmm. when she clearly does regret yeah. deeply what she did. But remember, in, in, in the internet's mind, this is the same thing as Taylor Swift uh, watching Taylor Swift's heiress tour on Disney Plus. Yeah, there's like a moral equivalency between like mm -hmm. do, being problematic and committing a crime. Okay, guys, outside of like the whole murdering thing, like if somebody on the internet tells you to take accountability for some stupid thing you did online, say, I'm not learning, I'm not doing better, I'm not taking accountability. Go to hell. <laughs> they were literally commenting on Gypsy's posts being like, say gay rights, say trans rights, Again, blah, blah, blah. There it is. Forced, compelled speech from weirdos on the internet who just, who, who don't care about these causes. What they care about is poking you and getting you to do what they want. Mm -hmm. It's all about power and control. Maybe Gypsy is going to realize that being in prison and remaining ignorant of the ways that the world better. has changed is better in some respects. Mm -hmm. uh, you just have better food now that you're out of prison, I guess. She's like, can I like go better back outfits. but like have a chef? Yeah. <laughs> can I just go back to prison and, you know, read books for the rest of my life and I mean, not deal with online beef? There's a, I mean, there's an argument to be made like the, about the addictive nature of the internet, which is like, Arguably, I would be 100,000 times happier if I didn't know any of this stuff happened or existed, right? A lot of our job is like looking for stuff to talk about or following what's going on online. Uh, this is where we get into the whole normie discussion that we were having the other day. Mm -hmm. And 
I was infinitely happier. But like when I first started this job, I never looked at, I did not have a Twitter. I had deleted my Twitter from years ago, which was actually mostly positive. It was, it was literally kind of what it is now, which is like, this movie's awesome. You should watch this movie. And I was happier. I was, mm -hmm. I, but I, it was my job, at my job, I was less effective. I think that I, I, more than I want to be someone who is not on social media, I just want to live in a world where social media doesn't exist. And unfortunately, that's not going to happen. Nope. That's just out of the realm of possibility now. Yep, but I do sad. feel bad for, for Gypsy. It's unfortunate. And remember, a bunch of 16-year-olds on the internet are telling you to say you're sorry and take accountability for your actions. And adults listen to 16-year-olds on the internet and say, I'm definitely learning. I'm definitely growing. I'm definitely taking responsibility for my own actions. That's not taking responsibility for your own actions. All that is is placating a bunch of internet terrorists who want to make you feel bad and get you to say the thing they want you to say. Yeah, it's just blurting out meaningless words. All right, let's go to cringe and cute of the day. What would you like to see first? Um, the buttons keep sticking uh, on me Let's here. see cringe first. Cringe first? Okay. Yeah, okay, the buttons keep sticking on me. <laughs> All right. Well, you said cringe, right? Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, uh, I, I found a couple here, so let's look at this one first. This lady is back. Remember this lady? What lady? Uh, you'll, you'll see once they do the close-up shot. Is it, is it Tiffany Gomez? No, it's not. No? No, but uh, this lady is a victim of plastic surgery, unfortunately. What is she doing? Oh no. Oh no. Yeah. How is this medically possible? How is this legal, more importantly? Yeah, it's a good question. Uh. Cringe? Yeah, that is cringe. It is cringe. Yikes. Not good. Um, that looks painful. It does, doesn't it? Ugh. Yeah. Let's hold off on the rest. We'll save it. I think that's enough cringe for that. Her face just looks like it hurts to me. Uh huh. Like, uh, or actually, what it kind of looks like. Is like I could take like a like a pin and just and like stick it in there. It wouldn't and, even hurt. And it would just poke it, and like a bunch of stuff would just spill. Oh, out. It, would, it would like pop like a balloon. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's scary. It's a bit gross. All right, guys, let's see cute of the day. Remember, you can submit cute of the day. You do have to do hashtag PCC pets so that I get it. Tag me in it. It's always easier for me to find. Uh, and let's look at a couple here. This this was one that I saved from a couple days ago. Uh, <laughs> Cat rolling on catnip. You surely love your catnip. That's all I can say. Oh you my love goodness. Your catnip as good as you love your food. He is high. You? He is high don't as a you? kite on yeah. the catnip. He, he doesn't even know where he is. Nope. Is it pretty good catnip? <laughs> oh, there he goes. There he goes. Yeah, I love that. That's from uh, I've Been Raptured, Let My Cat Out on Twitter. <laughs> Uh, and we'll do one more here. Uh, cat looks like it's it's in heaven though. This is uh, Craig Covenant says uh, pockets. This is our burnt potato moon. Burnt potato moon. Very cute. Cute. Looks like it's kind of um, saluting to the sky. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and get started then, shall we? So, guys, uh, one of the things that's been wondered or questioned for a long time is who is going to be cast as the next James Bond as Daniel Craig finished his tenure as that character not that long ago. Well, the question seems to be answered with actor Aaron Taylor Johnson being the one who is supposedly going to accept this role anytime in the next week or so. Yeah, naturally this is surprising because there were a lot of rumors that James Bond was going to get race swapped, specifically that the next James Bond would be a black man. If you said that if this were cast in 2020, yes, I do believe they would. When be yeah, when pressures were heightened, the studio probably almost definitely would have chosen to race swap James Bond. But that's not what's happening, and he seems like uh, a relatively good choice. I, I approve. I see people, a couple, I see Andrina in the chat says she disapproves of this casting. I approve of this casting. First of all, I would have put any money that Reggae Jean Page would have gotten this role. Perhaps if Bridgerton was coming out with more seasons more regularly, this would have happened. But here's the thing. I make a distinction all the time that there really is a difference between a movie actor and a television actor. Mm -hmm. Now, some movie actors will do television roles from time to time, especially with the prevalence of limited series these days but Aaron yeah. Taylor Johnson is an actor's actor he's a film actor he's a movie actor right so recently he did Tenet 
He did Kings, the most recent Kingsman movie. He did Bullet Train, which I think is what really won him this role. Tangerine. And is Tangerine. And then now he's going to be in the upcoming film, The Fall Guy, which we're very excited about. He's also going to be playing Craven and Craven the Hunter from Sony's Marvel Universe. We won't hold that one against him, most likely. But the point being that he is kind of checked all the right boxes to do this role. And I went through, so there was a couple of different posts that were talking about this. And I wanted to get a good sense because my first exposure to this guy was as kick-ass and kick-ass. He's obviously much younger mm -hmm. in that movie. And a guy did like a montage or somebody did a montage of him in a bunch of red carpets with his various looks. When he cuts his hair short, when he has the beard trimmed, I see it. I see it more yeah. than I did initially because really I think he's one of those actors where I think he benefits heavily from the beard a lot of the time, which likely will not be happening in this movie because it would be a, a pretty big departure given that most of them don't have beards. But he's got a resume going for this. And I do believe that if this had come out in 2020, that the casting would have been very, very different. But that's why you shouldn't allow current year political issues or current year culture to hamper your decision for a timeless piece of casting. He's also the right age. He might even be, in my opinion, a little on the older side, depending on how long it takes them to actually get the first movie going. Because he's, you said he's 33 now? Yeah, he's 33. Barbara Broccoli said that she, Barbara Broccoli's in charge of the, the company, EM Productions, that does this, uh, that does the Bond films. Obviously, Albert Broccoli, um, the whole production company, right? Said that they need to commit to at least 15 years, right? Daniel Craig did Casino Royale in 2006, which means it was probably under product in production in 2004. Yeah. Going, oh, so he was, he was there for 20 years. So... Aaron Taylor Johnson is going to be nearing his 50s or possibly in his 50s if he takes this done. role yep. by the time that they're done. And I do believe now. Now, here's the thing. Every time James Bond gets brought up, everyone brings up Idris Elba. OK, I, I actually made the point. I said, I don't think he's right for Bond. And I'll tell you why. I think he will make a fantastic Bond villain. I think Killian Murphy will make a fantastic uh, Bond villain. And they should do that for two of the next four films. Mm -hmm. Well, <laughs> I mean, I think that it's important for James Bond to be mm -hmm. white, if I'm being entirely honest. And I think most agree with you. I, I really? Actually think, I think most people agree I, with you. 100%. I think that most people, most like, people get really, when people they might give, agree with me silently, <laughs> but they wouldn't come out the, and say it. When people give the James Bond is just a code name thing, which is how they justify race swapping him. Because uh, James Bond has a lineage. Okay. Okay. So <laughs> when people give the James Bond as a code name thing, I can actively hear everyone groan because it is a bad argument. It's not. It's not a good one. I Miles Morales yes. is James Bond. He, he's Miles Morales. Uh, he, look, the other question is what will his what will his wife do? Did you know that his? Okay. So guys who don't know, uh, he's married to a woman named Sam Taylor Johnson. The biggest mark against this guy's resume is that he hyphenated his name with his wife's name. He said. That at the time, changing my last name felt yep. beautiful. Yes. So his wife, by the way, is his, a director. She she met him uh, when she was directing Nowhere Boy, the biopic about John Lennon's childhood. He played John Lennon in that. Yeah. And at the time that they met, it was literally from their description a casting couch situation. And he was 18, and she was 42. She is now 57. Yep. So they have about what twenty four years fun. age difference. Here's a here's a little fun tidbit. Did you know that she directed a short film called James Bond supports International Women's Day in two thousand eleven? What? Yeah. With uh, have you Dan seen it? No. With Daniel Craig and is it a, Judy is Dench. it like a satire it's like a, piece? No, it's like eleven minutes long. It's it's like it's like four to eleven minutes long. I was just looking at it. This today. sounds like an SNL skit. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? Uh, <laughs> I if if I had to say who I think should direct this movie. I will say that Sam Taylor Johnson. No, no. <laughs> I, I think you go with what works and you go with Martin Campbell. Martin Campbell directed GoldenEye and he directed Casino Royale. So he actually successfully launched two James Bond franchises. He launched both the Pierce Brosnan James Bond and the Daniel Craig James Bond. We'll ignore the fact that he made um, Memory, the really bad Liam Neeson movie from the other year, and uh, the Green Lantern movie, which we shall not speak about. Well, forget that. But when it comes to James Bond, he seems to know what the hell he's doing. I think all of those are good choices. Now, a lot of people are mad because they thought that Henry Cavill was going to get cast. I, I don't think that that was going to happen. 
Um, I think he is too uh, old, hulking, too and big, large. Too big. Yeah. Uh, look, uh, they're say, like I saw. So I think Andrina in the chat mentioned that. Um, Pierce or that uh, Daniel Craig was 38 when he got cast. Yes, and by the time it was done, he was playing old James Bond and withered and kind of tired James Bond. And I would like to see them return. Certainly, the the franchise potential for this, if you look at the work that Aaron Taylor Johnson has been doing, there is a more comedic tone to his work. There is a comedic tone to Bullet Train. Yeah. There is a comedic undertone to the Kingsman franchise. Kick-Ass certainly has a comedic tone to it. Tenet really doesn't, but he wasn't really the main character in Tenet. But he's built a resume that would work for a little bit lighter-hearted fare. And 20 years ago, I was very happy when they made James Bond a more serious character in Casino Royale and they did away with the gadgets at first and they went with the more serious tone because I felt that when Pierce Brosnan actually got the chance to do a colder, darker Bond, which did come out a little bit in the later ones like Die Another Day um, and The World Is Not Enough, not Die Another Day, uh, when, and The World Is Not Enough, Die Another Day was the opposite of that. When he got a chance to do the, the darker tones in GoldenEye and The World Is Not Enough, I felt like it really, really worked. So I felt that there was potential there. Now, Hollywood is full of cynicism yeah. and darkness. I don't need that now. They need to swing back. Yes, I think I that originally it sounds like the tone change in James Bond was a symptom of the larger trends in Hollywood. Exactly. Now time. it's been way overdone. They need to swing back to yeah. something a little bit more lighthearted. Plus, I agree. Henry Cavill, did, he already did The Man from UNCLE and he already did Mission Impossible. He's done uh, the spy franchise. So he's got the resume for it too i understand that but i do believe that they would have preferred a lesser known actor and aaron taylor johnson is a good mix of very much a hollywood movie star but not on the same level as a henry cavill like i said we were talking about um a couple weeks ago that he's got a new movie movie coming out called uh the ministry of ungentlemanly warfare and mm -hmm. he's kind of the star of that in in alan richens in that and he's going to be a big name in that too who's building up his pedigree i would look at uh aaron taylor johnson as more on the level of like an Al, uh, a little bit above an alan richson who's yeah. doing more television right now yeah so it's difficult for someone to switch effortlessly between the two or and it cross doesn't, that barrier in the chat i don't know if unknown is talking about johnson he says he's not a drop the actor doesn't need to be the draw for James Bond. Obviously, the IP Bond of James is the, Bond is, is the, the draw, draw for that. Daniel Craig yeah. was a was a uh, gaining a reputation for himself, and certainly was a pretty big actor at the time. Right before that, he had done Tomb Raider with with Angelina Jolie, where he plays an American and she plays a British person. God knows why they chose to do that. But the point is, is Daniel Craig's resume was good, but James Bond was the bigger name at the time. So it's not fully confirmed that Aaron Taylor Johnson is James Bond, by the way, because they offered him the role. He hasn't formally accepted the role until next week. Okay, Mighty Rack says Richard Madden. I didn't want Richard Madden. I didn't. If I had to choose between Richard Madden, I, I would have rather given it to Sebastian Stan, who's a little bit older, right? I'm, I'm just not a fan. Oh, he's saying Henry. Uh, the, he's saying Henry's not a fan. Okay, thank you, Unknown. The poll for the public's number one choice for James Bond Idris Elba won that poll. Yeah, of course. But I think they're not thinking about the longer term. Yep. Uh, he will be a big franchise. Actor as they're the thinking franchise about one on. movie. They're yeah. thinking about just one movie. Which I don't is think why they realize. I did think a good idea. I was like, okay, look, and this is a if you must. Like, if you have to do this, if, if all you can think about is race swapping characters and you love multiverses, I wouldn't have said no to in between the next full, like full term James Bond person, like the next person who's going to carry on the legacy, doing a single film with Idris Elba as James Bond as if it was like a multiverse character. You don't have to say that. Does everything have to be a multiverse? No, I'm, I'm not. I'm, what I'm saying is that you can do that movie as a one off. But he's too old to play the guy. He's he'd be seventy by the time it's done. He's like fifty Obviously, now. Obviously, it's he'd not, be, not He'd feasible. be like with a walker. Like it's not like being the president. Okay, no. you you you've got to actually be under retirement age. Yeah. So <laughs> I'm just wondering how old is the Bond girl going to be? Because obviously Aaron Taylor Johnson prefers them at least two decades older. Licensed to Cougar. It's going to be great. I can't he needs wait. to find the, the next Cougar Bond girl. Somebody who's, says, who's it going to be? Ooh, somebody says Meryl Alba. Streep. Somebody's Elba is too old. What about Jessica Alba? She's like in her 40s. Or, she could be a not Bond girl. Not old enough. She's he says that that's not old enough for his <laughs> tastes. They need to be over 50. <laughs> 
I guess you could pick J Lo. <laughs> they, they make uh, um, she wouldn't. Do, and that's the thing. If they're gonna do this, and Salma gonna, Hayek. If they're gonna, ooh, there you go. That's, <laughs> that would if, work. If they're gonna commit to a a lighter toned Bond movie with a little bit more reverence, then you better go back to the label of actually calling them Bond girls. Mm -hmm. They better be beautiful. There better not be a bunch of just dour, sad girls. It's gonna bosses. be Dakota Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so he says, get Angelina Jolie. She's pretty old now. Yeah, she is. She is. She's is she 50. over 50? She's, she's, wow. she's looking good, though. She Interesting. Can do that. I didn't realize. I just, I think this is a. They're going to get Io Edabiri. No, oh, please, no. Please, no. Look, I can't trust Hollywood casting directors anymore. Look, I don't think that this is a bad casting choice. Again, most of the, the people did this dude dirty when they posted like the images of him. It's like they went out of their way to find the worst pictures of the actor. To show you think they do you think they picked pictures of him where he looks older than his real age in i just think most of them because they pictured they showed him with the long hair they just didn't find photos like i literally had to go up and i looked up aaron taylor johnson's suit to find pictures of him in like a, in like a tux right from red mm -hmm. carpets and there's more than enough um images out there to show that this dude can play the role and if you haven't seen bullet train i really really do recommend going and watching it because it was a breath of fresh air it was from great. the rest of the hollywood direct that was coming out in 2022 yeah so uh i'm excited and i find this to be encouraging mm -hmm. all right let's go to super chats andrew jacobs said temporary r.i.p to kurtz and Dats dasovic great stream uh hold please the uh what's wrong Something wrong yeah, with the crisis meter? Something is wrong with the crisis meter, but it shouldn't be connected to this. Okay, that's weird. Uh, um, yeah, Colonel Kurtz called off her Monday streams. We, will, we hope to eventually get back to that, but she's got uh, some stuff going on. We may do some like pre-recorded videos on specific topics when she can find the time to do so. But uh, it's, uh, I always enjoyed doing those streams on Monday, so now I'm going to feel kind of bored Monday nights. I'm like, what am I supposed to do from 9 to 10.30? By the way, if you're not subscribed to Colonel Kurtz, you need to go do that now. Go watch her videos and go subscribe to her channel. I think you'll find a lot of it to be really, really good. And she covers a lot of areas of pop culture that we don't really get into as much, meaning like the Johnny Depp and Amber Heard stuff. She did a lot with Marilyn Manson. She talked a lot about academia. She's great. And I think you guys will like her channel. Shane H. Wilder said, happy Taco Tuesday, Brett and Mary. Live Moss. I can't for the weekend. You can't live Moss I'm, right now. I'm, I'm, it was more about saving money than anything, but uh, the buttons on this thing, the stream deck is like faulty today. That's weird. Yeah. Okay, Shane H. Wilder, remember Taco Tuesday is not about the tacos. It's a state of mind. No matter what life throws at you, you can always live Moss. Again, See, not, it's about your mindset. Not this week I can't. No, you can change your mindset without having tacos. That's okay. what he's saying. You don't need to eat tacos. I ate nothing like yesterday. I just ate like eight bowls of cereal. That's disgusting. I, I, I ate three, <laughs> that would make me throw up. I ate three bowls of cereal yesterday and then one before bed. What adult eats cereal me. with milk? Me. That's grow up. Corey Anderson said, hey! Mary, any update on the Excel spreadsheet project? How's it going? It's going. I spent like, I'm not kidding, probably six hours straight just writing about horrible OnlyFans stories. It, it was terrible, but you're gonna need it's still a work. It's a work in progress. I, I am going to need intense therapy once this is over. Let's, uh, let's hold off okay. on the rest and let's come back after that. Guys, let's get the second crisis party, shall we? Uh, it will make us feel better. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Speaking of feeling better, how's Sydney Sweeney doing these days? Sydney Sweeney is currently doing the press circuit for her new movie, Immaculate, in which she plays a nun who mysteriously gets pregnant. And she recently responded to the critics who say a lot of things about the fact that she shows her body, specifically in Euphoria and a lot of projects she's in. She does, in fact, do a lot of scenes where she shows her body and she's now kind of become known for it. Her decision to wear revealing outfits has been heavily debated and it's been politicized. Um, when I was gone, you made that video, uh, Sydney Sweeney ends wokeness, because in her SNL monologue, she yes. was joking about how she's known as the girl on TV who screams, cries and has sex uh, sometimes all at once. She knows that that's what her persona is. And I think that she's 
subtly trying to counteract it with all of these interviews she's doing she lately. She's very calculated in her business decisions, yeah. actually. I feel like it's like when we talk about sometimes, like, for somebody to come across as, like, dis in disarray or for things to work out a certain way, say a lot of work goes into making something seem like an accident. Mm -hmm. To her, a lot of work goes into making her seem kind of aloof and ditzy. Right, yeah. So they in this Variety interview, they asked her, after your SNL episode, I was struck by the way people talk and write about your body, including at times in a politicized way. Does that conversation reach you and what's your reaction to it? Sydney responded, I see it and I just can't allow myself to have a reaction. I don't know how to explain it. I'm still trying to figure it out myself. People feel connected and free to be able to speak about me in whatever way they want because they believe that I've signed my life away, that I'm not on a human level anymore because I'm an actor, that these characters are for everybody else, but then me as Sydney is not for me anymore. It's this weird relationship that people have with me that I have no control or say over. Uh, unfortunately, that is the simple fact of becoming a public figure. You do not have a choice once you, it's yeah. like when we talk about celebrities and creatives who when they put their art out there, they want you to take their art as they see it when that's not the point of art. The point is they put the art out there into the world and it is up to you as the audience, especially the paying audience, to judge that art as you see fit. And there's very little distinguish, uh, like distinguishing between that and the person behind the character because there's such a cult around of celebrity around certain people these days. For a time where we talk about how there aren't any new movie stars, there certainly is more hero worship of celebrities than there ever has been. I think that Sydney Sweeney and a lot of other actresses these days want all of the benefits of doing sex scenes, showing their body and honestly sexualizing themselves. But then they are shocked and offended at the consequences of how they're viewed in the public. Whereas most previous generations, when they went down that yeah. route, they accepted that that was something that was going to happen to them. Yeah, and I'm not saying, I think she seems like a well-meaning person who probably was never even told that showing your body to millions of people is even a bad idea. Like, mm -hmm. nobody probably even suggested to her that that might not work out well. But she went down that path, and now it's like she doesn't want people to view her as an object, I but you think, don't get that choice. I still think she's infinitely better at phrasing this stuff than most of the people in this space. When she says, uh, what, can you reread the first part she said back? Um, I, of her, I, can't of her answer. I can't allow myself to have a reaction. That part I, I like, because what she's saying is like, I can't control what people say, but I can control whether I react to something or not. Sure. That is fair. I think the way she's reacting to it is by, getting involved in all of these different creative projects so that people will start to take her seriously and hopefully that will happen for her however she's got time for now yeah. people are going to remember you for the most shocking thing about you as you said off air brett like people are going to remember remember you for your body if you are banking roles off mm -hmm. of sexuality and nudity and that's what she's been doing. And someone pointed out in the comments, hey, it's not like she's trying to hide her body from public view. And someone said, why should she? No member of the female gender of whatever age should ever have to not do something because it might trigger pathetic, weak-minded creeps to indulge in lewd thought and behavior because they refuse to control themselves. I think that is a perfect example of the discourse right now. I am so sick of the gaslighting. You do something crazy for attention and then you act like we're crazy for reacting and paying attention to it. Mm -hmm. Which you did something is, outrageous and then you got the outrage. Why are you shocked? They Because they want the outrage to be only in support and not, not even not in support, but just asking questions. I'm just asking questions or calling into question what any of this means. They want all of the benefits, but none of the pushback. But the point is you get the fame and popularity through the pushback, mm -hmm. right? 
That's true. I think the controversy got her more notoriety yeah. than her boobs did. And, and, and the other thing is, <laughs> I look at stuff like this and I say, look, the world is what it's always going to be and there's nothing you can do about that. The quicker you accept that, the happier you'll be. I tried to formulate thoughts the other night. The most underrated phrase that ever existed was the world isn't fair. And the second you learn to accept that, now I was thinking of it more in the context, I, I was talking to someone about tenets of Marxism and, and race Marxism. And so we were having a, a discussion about this. And I said, like, mm -hmm. one of the lost co concepts of the world today is that, you know, if you live in a, a singular existence and you don't think constantly about the struggles of everyone but just yourself, right? Like, if you think about just you, the world isn't fair, the world isn't always going to be fair, and the sooner you accept that, the happier you will be because you will learn that it's not just about the things that you don't have, but it's to flourish with the things that you do. But the problem is people don't want to accept reality for what it is anymore. In this context, what I'm saying is like, look, you're going to put this out there. You're going to make your money. You're going to find fame. You're going to find adulation. You're going to find more roles. And the people that have negative things to say about it or, or critique your choices are always going to exist. They will exist if you did nothing but fuddy-duddy roles where you wore nothing but uh, you know a top zipped all the way up to your neckline. Those people will still be there to criticize you. There will just be far fewer of them, and you will always get you will also get far fewer positive reactions as well. That's mm -hmm. just the way Hollywood is. Yeah, I. <sighs> It's difficult to say because um, people obviously really like Sydney Sweeney and her personality definitely, she has a magnetic personality and there are plenty of hot women in Hollywood who are not getting the same attention as her right now um, because her personality is special and it stands out. So I think that she is getting undersold, but it's not anyone else's fault. She's the one who's underselling her own potential by doing literal, I mean, she did a literal gangbang porn scene in Euphoria, fully like naked gangbang scene in Euphoria. When you do that, you, that's what you're gonna be known for. And you can, I'm sure she has a lot of artistic talent and acting talent, and it's going to be overlooked and you're going to have to prove yourself after you've done something so degrading. So she also did an interview with GQ just a couple days ago, and they addressed this issue again. They rehashed it again. And they said, when Sweeney and I met 18 months ago, we spoke about her body and the strange sense of ownership that strangers seem to claim over it. My body doesn't define who I am, she told me. That literally means nothing. Outside, unless these people know you as an individual, <laughs> yes, it does. To a lot of these people, yes, it does. This is what I was talking about. Just because you don't believe it to be true doesn't mean it factually isn't. I thought about that line during the maddeningly stupid discourse about whether her breasts on SNL were intended as product placement for the end of woke. Sweeney wanted to use SNL to laugh at what people said about her. Uh, joking in her opening monologue that her five-year business plan that she presented to her parents to get into acting had a backup plan. Show boobs. As she says, laughing, there are so many people out there who are like, oh, she's famous because she showed her boobs. Okay, when you show your boobs to millions of people, they're going to say that you're famous because you showed your boobs to millions of people. Is wanna, that so outlandish to assume that? I want to. Oh, and then she said, okay. "You you just learn the system. You can try and fight it, but they just fight back. Even if you stand up for yourself, people are going to attack you for standing up for yourself." I want to address a comment in the chat. I think this is really good. Nerdy Film Girl says it's not degrading. Her character has been developing over the seasons, and the show is all about the consequences of bad decisions people make when they are young. See, here's the thing, though. What she's talking about in the show, and I, and I think that's good to point out character development, but the problem is what she's talking about is that the people who are judging her aren't talking about the, the storylines or the characterization of these characters that she's playing. What they're talking about is just the surface level characteristics that she finds these people can't get past, right? So even if it's the most perfectly told story in history, a lot of people won't see past that to the deeper meaning of the story, whatever that is, because that's just how people are. Most people, in, especially in online discourse, won't make that distinction. And if you don't believe me, go down under any post about her and look at the gifts that are posted. It's not about the storyline. 
that are being told in these stories. And unfortunately, that's something she's going to have to accept because that's just the way of the world. It's not about the story. It's about the pornographic element of it. And I, I completely disagree. I think that it is degrading. Even if you can justify it by saying, oh, it's part of the story. It's part of her character. I disagree. I think that Sam Levinson, Euphoria's show creator and the showrunner, is a pervert who intentionally wants to include as much graphic sexual content as possible, even where it theoretically doesn't even belong for the storyline purposes. Uh, I so do think, I do think it is degrading yeah. and pornographic what she's doing. Thank you, nerdy film girl. I, I just think it was an interesting point to be made, though. So thank you for that comment. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, but she also she also had her comments about Madam Webb. She she's got, she's got a five-year plan. She does. Yes, just like Dakota Johnson did, Sydney Sweeney is being asked to answer for the flop that was Madam Webb. She said she used it as a building block for her career. It's what allowed me to build a relationship with Sony. Without doing Madam Webb, I wouldn't have a relationship with the decision, maker, decision makers over there. Everything in my career, I do not just for that story, but strategic business decisions. Because I did that, I was able to sell anyone but you. I was able to get Barbarella. And she yep. also made very polite comments about how this is much different from the filmmaking process that she's experienced before. She wishes that she could have had more creative input, but she wasn't a producer for Madam Web, so she, it wasn't her place. She was essentially being an actor for hire. Yeah. So she came out looking good, as did Dakota Johnson. And I also just wanted to um, talk to play... about Sydney Sweeney's addiction to ice cream. This this is where she really does. She, I, it's I really giving Marilyn Monroe. She she <laughs> asked. She pulled all the men she knows. She goes, "What would make me the fantasy girl of every man on planet Earth?" Yeah, um, I remember reading about like Marilyn Monroe's diet, and she talked about how she would sometimes stop by. Uh, like I guess they would sell Sundays at like drugstores back then, right? She would get a Sunday on her way home every night. Sydney Sweeney just revealed in an interview with Vogue that she has a bowl of ice cream before bed every night. I really enjoy ice cream. I feel like it keeps me from waking up. It's just so comforting. I already told you I loved her, Bob. You don't need to make me love her more. Like, seriously. She, she, and then beyond that, we have this yeah. clip of her reading the Bible. Do we not? Yeah. Yeah. Let's let's listen to Sydney Sweeney reading the Bible. I'm going to tell my, my, my kids that this is the Virgin Mary. Second Kings, chapter two, verses 23 to 24. From there, Elijah went up to Bethel. As he was walking along the road, some boys came out of town and jeered at him. Get out of here, Baldy, they said. Get out of here, Baldy. He turned around, looked at them, and called down a curse on them in the name of the Lord. Then two bears came out of the woods and mauled 42 of the boys. That was an advertisement for her uh, her new movie. Yeah, but you wouldn't know. So, uh, she, so what you're saying is that was a real verse, but she just changed a couple of words. I think she changed the words to baldy. Baldies. Uh, so, uh, you, it's not blasphemy, right? You told me this is not blasphemous in any way. The video. The, yeah. No, but I think her movie is. Okay. Definitely. I I am so sick of the. The way that Hollywood deals with Catholicism as an element of storytelling, like they were noting in this article pr promoting Immaculate, the director is actually a lapsed Catholic and he made this movie to express that you can have a struggle of faith and like you can decide like what parts of your religion you agree with and which ones you disagree with and then like find closure and actually this is about how religion has put traps on women's autonomy and blah 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 it's about roe v wade and thankfully sydney sweeney kept a distance from getting into abortion rhetoric here mm. but it's she seems just to be like doing good about moving her career forward she seems to be making all she's of her, diversifying all her portfolio yeah, is. which is it's it's good to see yep. all right Raymond Ayala said, from yesterday's OF topic, Redeeming Love is a great movie about a Christian farmer marrying a brothel worker. Okay, that's interesting. Derek Knoll said, hey, Brett, when are you going on FNT? Second, I DM you a Twix. 
you a stream of thought kind of my interpretation of what's wrong with the culture uh i'll, I'll okay. check uh that was I, difficult I'm, to i'm pretty decipher. bad about my dms a lot of the time like a lot when i'm at work and when i'm working and stuff like that i'm just i'm really bad about that as for friday night diets i just don't think that that's really possible because i think they go on like in the middle of our stream oh they do well I you could they, join later i think into they go the on at four or something like that i don't know but uh, i would love that but those guys are the actual uh, the actual nerds of the culture, and I'm uh, the normie. Remember, as I always right, say. Right, you're a normie. I'm the normie. So you wouldn't belong so there. I would not fit in. Shane H. Wilder said JoJo looks like Gene Simmons' gay niece. Simon's gay niece. Uh, okay, I'll have okay. to look that up. I'll do two more. Corey Anderson said, I stand PCC. Oh, we already read that one. Uh, we're down at Dave Collins. Dave Collins said, I'm glad they did not try to completely change James Bond's fundamental characteristics. So uh, what's interesting, too, is he's an inch taller than Daniel Craig. Uh, Aaron Taylor Johnson is 5'11", and Daniel Craig was 5'10". I think it actually even included like half measurements in there. It's like 5'10 and a half. Is it important for him to be around that I think, height? I think the or height is, looks good. I think is his Pierce height Rosen important bit, at all? I think Pierce Brosnan was a little bit taller. I think Pierce Brosnan was six feet, but I could be wrong about that. Do you think that James Bond's height matters? I think he's a good, I think that's a good height there. 5'10", five, 5'11", five, like he, if he was taller, he would stand out too much. Like if he's uh, like the average guy is 5'9". But if they can make a short actor look taller, why can't they make a tall actor look shorter? Well, then it's just extra camera work and I guess. extra extra effort. So yeah. let's hold off on the rest and we'll come back after the fact. Let's move on and let's go ahead and talk about The Rock. He's teaching people how to properly ask for consent. Mm -hmm. The feminists are heaping praise on The Rock right now because he reportedly gave us a master class in asking for consent when he was on the Drew Barrymore show the other day. So Drew Barrymore, she comes out dressed up as The Rock from the 90s, fanny pack and all. I'm going to show the wig the and everything. Here. Here's a, a picture of her. With, yeah. Uh, you can kind of see. see this, he's holding her up on his shoulders, as you can see. This is a lot of physical contact. A couple of years ago, I think he actually did put this outfit back on. And the first time I saw it, I'm like, man, that really was a look back in the, the fanny pack, the blue <laughs> jeans. I mean, how he's dressed now, right back then, it's just how women dress now. Actually, yeah, that's yeah. weird. Yeah, that's I, I, I'm, I wish I could erase that from yeah. from my mind. Sorry to say. Um, so basically, Drew Barrymore is sitting with The Rock and she asks The Rock to do squats with her over his shoulders. And he proceeded to meticulously obtain consent. Well, from as Drew you Barrymore, should, right? As you should. Yeah. In order to uh, engage in physical contact. And he is teaching all of the ignorant men out there how you should treat a woman because The Rock, he respects women. He's better than everyone else on the planet. So let's take a look at that video where he does the squats. It was actually uh, cute. It was kind of cute. She really does. Uh, okay, so before we the watch shame. this, I do want to point out there was once a skit. There was once a skit that, uh, so back in the WWE days, this is going to seem like I'm not making sense, but there's a point here. Uh, the Rock was part of a, a like a stable of wrestlers called the Nation of Domination. Okay. Okay, and they would feud with DX, Degeneration X. Uh, the Nation was like The Rock, Farouk, Mark Henry, and the Nation of Domination was like Triple H, X Pac, Billy Gunn, Road Dogg, all these other wrestlers. And there's a skit where everyone in DX comes out dressed as members of the nation of domination and there is blackface going on i'm talking in what four, year in 98 uh, okay and it's it's triple h, it was the 90s triple h didn't didn't wear the blackface but x pac and uh, and even oh and uh even i think it was x pac came out as mark henry mark henry was like he's the world's strongest man so he came out with like cushions around him so it wasn't just blackface it was blackface plus fat shaming back in the 90s Damn. It was yeah. the 90s. Uh, and, and, it but sure was Triple the 90s. H came out wearing the Rock's outfit and he had like a fake afro yeah. on and stuff. Enthusiastic consent, because I've heard that's important. <laughs> she was going, yes. 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 So I think that would count as enthusiastic consent, which of course yes. you need if you of don't course. want to be reported to the police for a rape. So feminists immediately responded to this with just a chorus of praise for The Rock because he is giving an, a, a good example for all men out there who need to be trained out of their rapey tendencies. 
So this outlet called Scary Mommy, I'm not kidding, that's what it's called, they said, sure, she had just asked to be lifted, which implies touching, but Johnson still took a moment to explain where he would need to grab her and confirm that she was giving him consent. This shouldn't seem like a big deal, but it is. You're While many of us may joke about wishing a big hulking guy like, <laughs> like The Rock would sweep us off our feet, the truth of the matter is being lifted requires a lot of physical contact, something that should always require consent. The, there was like a visceral reaction on her face to his strength. <laughs> yeah, it was, was feral. She the, went the, fully feral she's in like, that like moment. like a fireman. Yeah. Oh, by the way, here's the photo, guys. Oh, goodness. <laughs> it was a different time. It was the 90s, guys. Yeah, this It's no good. You can't do that anymore. Yeah. The exchange was quick and not at all awkward, proving that asking for consent doesn't need to be cumbersome, even in the moment. Uh, what it the, does. Yes, it does. Uh, it, it is cumbersome. Doing doing yes, a fireman's is. carry and squats with a TV host is not the same thing as consent during sex. Not at all. They're very obviously different. not. Um, so when Drew Barrymore shared this clip, here were some of the comments. The respect this man just showed her by explaining what he was going to do and getting her consent is what everyone needs to learn. The way The Rock asked for consent and explained what he was going to do before doing it, you can tell he's a girl dad. Bravo, sir. He is a girl dad. <laughs> and this is how we do consent. It doesn't need to be weird. This is perfection, says the goth mermaid. Ever the gentleman getting full consent before touching her, even when it was her idea first. What a class act. I love him. And I didn't think I could love The Rock more. And there he goes asking for consent and explaining everything because even though she asked, he still wanted to make her comfortable. Uh, I think he wants to avoid being sued. Um. <laughs> I mean, obviously this is a talk show. I assume that all of this was planned and scripted beforehand. The Rock is perhaps, what's really funny is a lot of people are really, really enjoying The Rock's current run with WWE. He gets to make his kind of uh, Attitude Era-esque promos. He gets to swear. He's playing a bad guy for the first time in a very long time. And a lot of the wrestlers are upset because they don't feel like they're getting the latitude that he gets. Uh, but what's funny about it is him as a bad guy is perfect because he's bad in the complete opposite reason why people don't like him in the real world, which is that he really is the most corporate product in Hollywood. He really is. He is the most play it safe person that there is. He's very inoffensive. Mm -hmm. There isn't a whole lot that feels real about him except for the fact that he's very good at making the average person, a normie, believe that what you're looking at is 110% genuine. And again, I can't say whether that's true or not. I don't know the guy. But I do know that when the average person who does pay attention to this stuff looks at it, they see somebody who's perhaps a bit too polished. It is hard to believe that someone at his level has never done anything shady before. oh well, i mean it's wrestling they've all done yeah <laughs> there's there's, there's a 20 Nanners one here from yeah. sent 20 dollars. the rock literally did what any instructor does lol i mean yeah i don't understand why this is such a groundbreaking moment but i see that the feminists were taken aback to see this one of them wrote a very long thread about this and actually they believe sh that he shouldn't be praised for doing this why okay this is said it was clear she was up for it and excited. She asked the question, which could have implied, it could have implied consent to him. He's widely considered attractive and probably knows that loads of folks would be up for this. Not women, folks. Yep. Yet he chooses not to accept implied consent and considers it important to make it clear what each party is consenting to. That is such an important addition to all conversations about consent. It's not just the, about the end goal, it's about what's going on to get you there. It was a great example, but even as I say that, I'm also aware that this praise he's getting tells us another story. The bar is so low regarding consent. He did a good thing, but it should be the most normal thing in the world. A high expectation for communication, boundaries, and the desire to ensure consent should just be the norm. And I'm tired of celebrating the moments where someone does it when it actually should just be a given. Well, how about this? If you want this to be the given, then you should celebrate it when it happens so you can encourage people to behave the way you want them to. 
No, don't praise a fish for swimming. Positive reinforcement is far more likely to get you the outcome that you want than negative reinforcement. Look, Drew Barrymore and her female audience, they all clearly think that The Rock is hot mm -hmm. and attractive. I think they wouldn't have had a problem with it if she asked to be carried, mm. to be lifted, and he just went ahead and did it without much warning. Okay, I really don't think is that this, would be uh, that is, bad is of a thing. Is this literally just handsome privilege? Like, if he was ugly, then it's a problem? I think it might be. Mm. Yeah. I mean, I think the handsome privilege would allow him to get away with not asking for consent. Yeah. Right? Mm. Also, they're saying implied consent isn't good enough. What is implied about her literally asking him to do it? Yeah. I, these people aren't human. They like literally don't understand that body language exists. Deer Scream says The Rock had to get surgery for gynecomastia. Yes. Yeah, so there's an era in is wrestling. That's true. Yes. Yeah, so there's there's a there's this suspicious wow. era in wrestling where for a, a a month or two, The Rock would wrestle instead of in his trunks with no shirt on, he would wrestle in track pants with a top. Uh, to hide the scars from the surgery. Oh, until they went away. Until they went away. Why did he have to go to surgery for I that? I would imagine steroids did a, did a number on it back then. I, can't, I don't know for sure. Um, I feel like it would be getting off the steroids or, or off of testosterone because then your body isn't able to... Yep. to make testosterone at the same levels, right? But uh, so people are saying like he rode, the, he rode the, the coattails of Stone Cold. Yes, well, Stone Cold Steve Austin is always the superior uh, draw, in, in my opinion. But yeah, th this discourse around it, like I just wonder if it's, it just seems like a painful existence where this is what you take away from, from that encounter. It was, a harm, it, was a, it was a relatively harmless encounter, which is just the bread and butter of all daytime television. It's exactly what you appear to be. And if you believe for one second that every second of that wasn't choreographed beforehand, you are wrong. It was off of a written question yes. that was printed out for Drew Barrymore. What, no, what him, so. She asks, he's like, I'm sorry, I'm just, my oh, back hurts no, today, thanks. I can't. Let's move on. Yeah. Like, no, that wasn't going to happen, obviously. That's I not think, how those things happen. I think that these women are lying to themselves about what they want from men, to be honest. With all of these feminists screeching about how they want men to ask for consent, to kiss them, to hold their hand even, for yeah. any physical contact whatsoever, they're asking for something that, they don't actually want they don't find that attractive when a guy doesn't just take the lead and take action i think it's a i think it's a debate about um real world versus theoretical meaning like they can have this discussion in a theoretical sense online yeah but the real world for them would be a very very different thing when everyone knows that you know i i guess like the look on someone's face uh it is probably a more meaningful yes than them screaming the word yes. This is decades in of the real now. world. The problem is now everybody grows up looking at their phones and nobody can read facial expressions anymore. I still believe the CIA created emojis because the next generation of kids were so brain dead from looking at their phones so co constantly they weren't looking at actual people's faces and can't read people's mm. emotions. Kind of like how they're talking about how kids are developmentally delayed because of COVID and masks. I still know that they changed the emojis they updated the emojis for COVID. Yeah. Like they updated the syringe emoji so that it, it wasn't red anymore. What's it now? They changed it to just clear. Oh. And then they changed the emoji of a, like the mask on the face to have like smiling eyes. It's super sinister. Psy anyway, let's, let's finish these. Let's super get a, let's, guys, let's get a, we're going to hang out here until five, but let's get a second crisis party. Huh? The last of my kind said Sophia Vergara bond. Bond girl? Again, uh, a little, probably considered a little old. I would be okay with, um, uh, who's the one I just mentioned the other week? The one that was in Ambulance. Guys, what was the name of the girl in Ambulance? I'm having one of those days where I can't remember names. Earlier, somebody was clowning on me because I couldn't remember Sam Wilson's name from Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Um, um, uh, wait, how old is Sophia, Sophia Vergara? She's got to be in her, I, I'm not going to guess. She's not in her 20s or her 30s, that's for sure. Look, I'm just yeah. saying that Aaron Taylor Johnson has a preference, and if they want him to play James Bond, they're going to have to respect his preference. No, they will not. They and will cast he, whoever they want. And if he can't convincingly seduce a woman who is in her 20s on camera, they're going to have to get Salma Hayek in the studio. Um, this is the truth. Isaac Gonzalez. Get Isaac Gonzalez. Corey Anderson said Sarah Sarah Taylor Johnson? That's her name. No who who is Sarah Taylor Johnson? That's his wife's name. 
No, it's Samantha Taylor Johnson. Looks like a mix between Sarah Jessica Parker and the Crypt Keeper. <laughs> she looks like uh, Emmanuel Macron's wife, Bridget, Bridget Macron. Shane H. Wilder. So he says cast Jennifer Coolidge. Yes. Uh, let us know who you think should be the next Bond girl. I guess Jennifer Coolidge Jennifer is Coolidge. Uh, exactly. Sophia she's Vigara in the Renaissance. Sophia Vergara is 51. Okay. Yeah. So she's over 50. She She's in the running. Shane H. Wilder said the verse actually said bald head and the JoJo joke was that she looked like a kiss reject. <laughs> Shane H. Wilder, uh, reset the it was the 90s counter. Look, there, back is, to zero. there is nothing wrong with, with that, all right? I, I want merch that says it was the 90s. W Nanners. Oh, we already we read that, that one. one. Guys, we're just going to hang out. Uh, uh, Isaac Gonzalez is fine. Yes, I think Isaac Gonzalez would be a good casting choice. Plus, she's exotic. She's beautiful. Uh, and she would be perfect as a, as a Bond girl. What about Vanessa Kirby? I guess. No. <sighs> And yeah. DeArmas? She's already been. She was in the last one. Last oh, two. right. Yeah. Duh. That was, that was actually my first thought. I'm like, Anna did. Never they mind. They can't repeat. Yeah. Um, Amber Heard? <laughs> that would be hilarious. How about that? They just lean into it. Um, what do you mean? Uh, what do you think of um, Sydney Sweeney? There you go. There's a, there's a thought right there. She would actually be really good at convincingly playing like a, a damsel in distress rather than having to be a girl boss. You think? Oh, Mr. Mm -hmm. Bond, can't you save me? Uh, or maybe... I can't remember the name. Oh, Alexa Demi is her, one of her co-stars in Euphoria. Uh, Ian said, uh, uh, Wodenshot says, Ian always misses the obvious choices. They passed on Monica Bellucci when she was in her prime in favor of Terry Hatcher. Yeah, and from what I remember somebody saying, uh, Pierce Brosnan and Terry Hatcher, if I remember correctly, you can correct me if I'm wrong, they didn't have like super great chemistry on set. Well, that's their yeah. fault. Yeah. So maybe that's what you're talking about. They're going to have to cast an old lady. <laughs> otherwise, Aaron Taylor Johnson is like, ew, a girl in her 20s. Yeah, he, he's grossed out by women who are of childbearing they put, age. They put so. Sydney Sweeney in front of him. He's like, it's giving me the ick. Yeah, guys. like they definitely Big need to girl be in her 20s is giving me the ick. He says, yeah. Maybe Aaron Taylor Johnson's wife is his beard. I mean, what, what, would it even be necessary in the year 2024? Maybe. If they've got they kids. got together in 2009. Uh, Disco Jensen says, women wanting consent or wanting men to take charge with implied consent depends entirely on a man's level of attractiveness. If you have to ask, they're not that into you. I saw some video on Twitter the other day of like this guy and a girl like at a bar being filmed and he keeps leaning over to like give her a kiss and she keeps pulling away and dude just can't take a hand. Look, that's the thing. Okay. I listened to this podcast of uh, Jordan Peterson. He said that it's actually been studied that men in general overestimate women's sexual interest in them. I have no doubt. And that's in like that's an evolutionary like probably a survival mechanism. Like they overestimate a woman's interest in them, but then alcohol involved like multiplies mm. that by a lot. So they over if you're drinking, you're like way overestimating probably so what a woman's interest like, in you. If you have zero confidence and you just assume no woman ever has any interest in you and you get drunk, you, you gotta have, drink you, a little. You uh, now not, just not get have, drunk. Now you evolutionarily have just the the basic amount of it might get you to the baseline. Yeah. 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 But I think what it really is about is context. Okay. And unfortunately some guys just aren't the best at reading women's body language yep. but that is a necessary tool pat the plumber said you're just gonna hang out when there's a genocide going How on in Gaza. there's people dying across the world how there's, dare you there's people dying like that's the thing you can't care about everyone like imagine a world now like where mother Teresa is actually just an internet activist Ugh. Oh, like, I know Mother Teresa would get canceled on Twitter if she were alive today. High Vulture 75 said, Mary, do you base your opinion of tacos entirely on Taco Bell's tacos, which are objectively awful? If so, you need to expand your horizons. I do not base my opinion of tacos entirely on Taco Bell's tacos. I have, in fact, tried other tacos in my life. And Still prefer Taco they're just, Bell? I just don't. 
I, I just hate how structurally unsound they are. It's just not. You, you don't do the thing where, okay, so what you do is you t you have your taco and you put another shell underneath it so that the when the taco stuff slips out, it just goes and makes another taco underneath it. Well, in that case, shouldn't I just eat something that doesn't fall apart when I eat it? I'm just saying you gotta, you gotta, modern problems require modern solutions. Just the fact of the matter. High Vulture 75, or sorry, uh, Shane H. Wilder said, can we make the It Was the 90s merch with the vector art pattern from those paper cups? Uh, yeah, probably. As long as no one owns the design. Yeah, I don't know if that's copyrighted. or. I bet it's like not. That. Probably not. I mean, a lot of people use it. But that would so. work really well, actually. Yeah. That's a good idea. We'll have to get uh, uh, Jessica. Are you watching right now? We're going to need you to, to do that. It was the 90s, guys. It was the if 90s. you're listening. If you're listening right if now. If you even care. Now people are arguing about Taco Bell. Uh, hard shell or soft shell tacos? I, I don't know. I guess the soft shell because that falls apart less yeah. than the hard shell. But I just don't, I don't care for them in general. Uh, I prefer like the corn like the like the corn tortilla that's like it's not hard but it's not soft. Right. Yeah, yeah that's actually superior. You need to cook the soft shell. Is what I mean. You got uh, double deck yeah, like double decker taco or cheesy gordita crunch. Now I'm hungry. Damn it. And I'm taking the week off fast food. This sucks. What about chalupas? What do you think of those? Mm, I don't know if I've ever even had a chalupa. They're more Seriously. structurally sound, yeah. so I prefer that. Uh, I I do love a chili cheese burrito back when they when I when I would get chili cheese burritos on the regular, but now I'm just R. really really hungry. And now I'm really really sad. I do like the Doritos Locos tacos. I liked it when they had the Cooler Ranch ones. Now they just have the nacho cheese ones. I think. I am mostly looking forward to Chinese food after this. <laughs> Actually, uh, uh, speaking of like ch uh, like ch uh, chips, so I've been eating chili cheese Frito jerky, and it's the greatest thing ever. That's disgusting. It's amazing, and I found it at like a, when we were driving back from Michigan, we found it at like this like, like one of the truck stops, right? The big ones that are like the stores, like the size of a mall. The um, <laughs> Truck I've never stops. seen a truck stop like this. Yeah, so they're, they're huge, right? And uh, I wasn't able to find them anywhere else. Finally, the other day, I, was in a, I found one in a Dollar General. And I just bought like five of them. <laughs> well, now you know where to go. Yes. Yeah, yeah, dollar General is a dark place, uh, literally and figuratively. Depends on your mood. but That's gross. If by gross, you mean unbelievably good. There's so... I, I, you know, usually I'm not like picky or whatever, but that just looks disgusting. It's, uh, it's delicious and I recommend everybody go and get some. Also, why is jerky so expensive anyway? I, I think a lot of people like one day I will consider myself financially doing well when beef jerky doesn't look expensive. To when me. it doesn't hurt you to buy yes. it. Pat the Plumber said, get Brett some Sheets Tacos stats. We can't. I have to take the week off. I mean, it was more for financial reasons for me than physical reasons, but I think both are beneficial. How much do they cost? I, I just, I, I, I buy too much fast. I, I go to Sheets. I go out to eat too much, and I want to just break the cycle for a while, see if it can't help myself a little bit. Self-improvement isn't a bad thing. Shane H. Wilder said, okay, favorite Chinese food. How about you? I just eat think? like chicken fried rice and, and like cream cheese wontons. None of that, mm -hmm. uh, those other types of wontons. Well, I've heard that all of the Chinese food in this country is fake Chinese food and it's not authentic, so. Which is fine. But I, having gone to China and eaten Chinese Chinese food, I think it's exactly the same. Mm -hmm. The American version is just greasier. Um, I think like probably pork buns. Those are really good. Somebody says Mary is 33 and still crushes fast food daily. 33? Who told you that? Who told you that? <laughs> Who told you that? That is ridiculous. It's not what true. Is, so, so what do you eat the most when you get Chinese? Just the pork? I don't know. Hmm. Whatever. Fried yeah. rice. No, I'm really, really hungry. I like okay, so better. last, so we get like uh, Chinese here on like we get shri uh, like uh, seafood here in, in Chinese food on Fridays, right? And then they get the burgers too, mm -hmm. right? And I grab some chicken fried rice and a burger to take with me home. And you just leave. You Le just you literally. Well, no, no, this wasn't that. So th I did. You literally that. evaporate from a room. I go get my ease. food. And then I'm gone. I'm like a phantom. I just yeah. disappear. But the point is, I brought it up here, and I was going to bring it home with me that night. 
and I you left, left it, here. it just sitting there. Ew! I came back the next day to throw it away so that it wouldn't be gr- like even more gross by Monday. That's disgusting. <laughs> it's like, damn it! I left it up here, and I was like, frick! Not only is it going to go bad, but now I'm hungry and I have nothing to eat. Yeah, I I actually saw it sitting there, and I had a feeling you would do that, but. I'm not going to tell you what to do with your food. Uh, Deer Scream says baited and outsmarted because I addressed your age. I think they thought he just wanted to be mentioned. I see okay. people, people, people do that. Uh, I think Mary's actually 35. She's just aging really, really well. Secretly? Secretly. What if I just dropped that bomb like on one you? Day it just, one day it just comes out. You're like, well, when I was in high school, and, the, and then let's just like <laughs> not that year, like in 89. I'm like, 80 not? Don't you mean? Like, I mean, uh, not 89. I mean, 2009. I... Uh... I'm actually secretly a vampire who was born 100 years ago. That'd be pretty cool. That's Plus why you, I'm so racist and sexist Anne and Rice, homophobic. So you're a big fan of like Anne Rice. and. <laughs> yeah. I am not a fan of Anne Rice. I've never read an Anne Rice novel, I swear. Mm-hmm. Uh, we, should start a, we should start a fortune cookie company. Well, what, what are they going to say? You've, you, I'll like, let you come up with the phrase. It was the 90s? It was the 90s. It, it'll say that. Yeah. Um, Maybe your quote, everyone should suffer quietly and die young. <laughs> okay, so no, I read, uh, um, we were looking at like positive affirmation quotes the other day and laughing at them. Uh, and one of them was, it said, love yourself even if you're not that great. I Okay, did did you see, um, do you remember Just Girly Things? No, but I was saw, that part of I your, saw your like, tweet about it. Consciousness or like zeitgeist no. at all? Okay, well, this was this is like this most viral Tumblr blog okay. back in the day before I even knew what Tumblr was. And it was this account called Just Girly Things. And they would just post like a picture. It's like a picture of a Frappuccino. And then there's text on the screen. It says, enjoying your Frappuccino from Starbucks. Just girly things. So you just Wearing want- sweaters in the fall. Just girly things. And it was just like the simple joys of being a woman but the problem is you're not allowed to do that anymore you're supposed to be on ssris and depressed and worried about palestine right that's right. just what and you're and supposed I, to care about i refuse about social i refuse injustice. to do that you're supposed to care about all of those things and you're you're kind of structurally supposed to just be unhappy because other yeah. people are unhappy yeah or not, not that's the thing not even other people other theoretical people are unhappy so you should also be unhappy. Yes, you should be miserable. Right. You know what really is? People are people coped and we're like, America's got it so good. Okay, so they won't ever own homes, but for the most part, they got it pretty, pretty good. Let's make it so that they can't be happy and they're miserable. Like and we Americans we aren't in a war torn country, but no. someone else out there, they're in a war torn country. So I should be really unhappy about that all the time yep. and never enjoy anything in life. That's why I'm saying we need just girly things to make a comeback in 2024. Um, Shane H. Wilder, somehow. Shane H. Wilder says, why would Brett look at just girly things as a dude? Yeah, I had no idea what that was. I thought this was like a ubiquitous thing on the internet in like the late 2000s. Well, the, the just girly things part would probably, you know, ward off most What men. about the... The just would you look at a page called dude shit? <laughs> um, would that be the equivalent? I guess. Just dudely things? Just <laughs> for the bros? <laughs> um, I, I might assume it's something gay. The last of my kind said Helen Mirren blo- Bond girl raid the nursing home. Well, isn't that, um, isn't she, she's in Fast and the Furious franchise, so that makes perfect sense. Shane H. Wilder said, I'll be having homemade teriyaki beef with sautéed green beans. Simple 20 bucks for a week's worth of meals. Yeah, but will it have chili cheese Frito flavoring? That's the real question. No, and it won't have MSG either. Also, like, who was it? Like, the other day, it was like, somebody's like, and you have ketchup potato chips? It's like the most... I think ke- Valiant Renegade was shaming you for your, for your ketchup chips. I think so, a little bit as well. You felt shamed. I, I felt- could tell. Uh, I mean, I don't feel any shame, but I'll judge his shaming of me. Yeah. I love them. They're delicious. <laughs> uh, Ryan said just girly things was a psyop test run, in my opinion. Uh, how so? Psyop people into what? How would that even work? Psyop women into getting their nails done and well, drinking Starbucks? Said, okay, we so were going to do that anyway. <laughs> somebody said, ooh, said so, so just girly things. So consumerism. Is that the, is that the issue that it's... Uh, well, they weren't all like that. Yeah. Like, 
I don't know, some of them were like going on adventures with your friends, just girly things. Like it was just random How stuff like that. How can you do that when there's a genocide you going on? You can't do any of these girly things when there is a genocide going on in Gaza. What? I got an idea. What was it? Is it going on a, going on a what? An adventure. How about going on an adventure to a protest? Yeah. Yeah. How about that? Twenty dollar one here from the manic mustache says heat uh, heat take alert. Implied consent suggests that it is an implied relationship, also known as intimacy. You have to get consent from someone you have no relationship with. The '90s really screwed me up. That's a really good point, actually. I mean. Why is there a consent brigade today? It's probably because people are having sex with strangers where you don't have preconceived notions of what's appropriate with someone. You don't know them. Yeah. So, I mean, that's why we've had to become so legalistic about all of these things. And I think one of the reasons things. why the discourse is so fervent online is because that whole barrier evaporates and there's no actual intimacy when debating the analytical nature of something online. Mm-hmm. Gordon Chumway. How can you be on SSRIs when there is a genocide in Palestine? I don't understand you. How can you be watching this podcast, sending super chats when there's a genocide going on in Palestine? How can you do that knowing that none of this money will go to Palestine? You should be sending that money to someone's Venmo page in Gaza. This is where you say, no, now I'm going to Venmo you harder. (laughs) Corey Anderson said YouTube will let me recommend an Instagram page of a Catholic lady. Wait, what? I don't know what that means. You mean it wouldn't let you? Wouldn't let you? Try again. Uh, Make the Catholic lady Sydney Sweeney reading the Bible. I bet you it will let you. The manic mustache said chili cheese jerky is fire. It is, in fact, See? not fire. It is, you haven't even tried it, so you don't know. I, I don't want to make contact with that. <laughs> it's, not, it's not recognizable as food. Says the woman who loves Taco Bell. That's different. No, it's not different different. in any way, shape, or form. There are vegetables there. They have vegetables. I mean, kind of, sort of, (laughs) a little bit. They have, they are putting uh, purple cabbage in some of their burritos now. Like, that's a vegetable. Allegedly, Ruckus says, gingers put ketchup on chips. Get honest, Brett. I don't know what that means. I don't know what that means Do gingers do that? And I don't uh, put ketchups on chips. And that would destroy the texture. That would be gross. Shane H. Wilder said, Brett, I gave up snacks and sweets for Lent. You can't tempt me with your horribly seasoned jerky and chips. Yes, I can. Well, you've also been drinking this weird, like, starburst water. Guys. Which isn't water. Guys, there is a conspiracy going on right now. The water companies, they do not have our best interests at heart. So... I, so the first one I got, like somebody gave it to me, right? It's like an ice water and it's Starburst flavored water. And I'm not even kidding you. It tastes exactly like a freaking cherry Starburst. It says no sugar, no carbs, no calories. I'm like, I think they're lying. Personally, I think they're lying. It says contains 1% juice. I've had actual juice that says contains 0% juice. How is that possible? How can water be 1% juice? Juice from a Starburst, maybe? How? how you can can, can a, you juice a Starburst? I, it has juice? Probably. The juice is loose, man. Okay. All I know is these water companies are out to make us fat, lazy, Bread is and, juicing and confirmed. docile. All right. And, and here's the problem. It's really good. And depending on your level of self-control, you can trick yourself into thinking that this disgustingly overly indulgent thing is actually water. It is not. I refuse to believe it. Well, is it is it carbonated? I thought all the ice. Maybe this. Water is but okay. If it is, it's not very carbonated. Shane H. Wilder said, can confirm Taco Bell is food. I mean, what's your definition of So food, true. Right? I agree with you, Liv Moss. There's a Corey $20 Anderson. One. There's a $20 one there from Darth oh. Doza. Darth Doza. Mary saw that the OF girl from your whatever appearance, Nala, had found Christ. Real or a ploy to pull in viewers to her OF. Tacos are not hot. Um, Believe it or not, there's a video on our channel. Yeah. You can watch we, us talk about exactly that. We did cover this story yesterday, but my overall conclusion from it was that you know, if it's if it's genuine, that is a great thing, and we should be happy for for that. But if it's not genuine, then 
I'm going to continue living my life. I'm not going to lose any sleep over it, but I do hope that it's real. I think that that's the best approach, yeah. right? It's like, as long as it's no skin off your back, if it goes wrong, then... There are just a lot of people who have genuine hate for mm. someone who has done that. And mm. I don't. I don't feel that way. Corey Anderson said, daily dose of Catholic truth. So that's the Instagram page. Oh, okay. I'll take a look at it after this. Um, I, I, I'm going to have to disagree with you, Shane. Uh, cause somebody in the chat says the EU does not consider Taco Bell real food. Oh, you know, they like, I think that Allegedly they have ruckus. Thank you. I think they have regulations in the UK where you're not allowed to spend uh, a certain amount of money on fast food at once. So if you want to buy a lot of fast food items at once, you have to like separate it into multiple transactions and it's technically against the law. Didn't they do that here with like drink sizes? They did that in California, okay. I think, yeah. And now in California, they're banning, like they're gonna ban uh, um, Cheetos. The Look, um, If someone wants to drink a, a huge amount of soda, they're going to just buy two medium sodas or mm -hmm. two larges, like, we're literally being treated like babies. If someone doesn't have the willpower to not drink soda, that is not the government's problem to solve for them, obviously. Wow, that was the most libertarian thing I've ever heard Mary say in her entire life. Well, look, once we start regulating everything, let's, okay, fine. But like, <laughs> regulate important shit first. Yeah. Disco Jensen said, taking your HRT shot and shaving the five o'clock shadow, just girly things. See, that's the thing. It probably got co-opted by people trying to steal the valor of the just girly things movement. And that's why we can't have nice things today. The guy's version is taking your TRT and uh, working out just, just manly things. And uh, drinking olive oil and raw No, eggs. no, you drink, you drink one of the white monsters. We drink a white monster. Drinking a white monster and going to work on four hours of sleep. Just manly things. Yeah, then zinning. Corey Anderson said Palestine isn't real. Um, that Palestine over yeah. there isn't real. real. Look, isn't it sad that a whole continent, like a whole, a whole country, just sad for something that they're not... The, like, it'd be one thing if you were there, right? If you went to these places and you saw what uh what it was to live in a war-torn country but for so much of it it's like i feel like it's displaced because there's so little struggle here at home you know if you're working your hundred thousand dollar a year email job and you've got it pretty good and you've been going to a college that's told you consistently that you're a bad person and the fact that you have it good is because you were born that way you were born with that privilege in everything you have which by the way you need right you need to be you have shelter you need a car you need all of these things to live your life whatever here in america even if you don't need a car even if you have to live in a city right you have all of these things and they say not only do you need it but you don't deserve it as well so you're caught in mm -hmm. a catch-22 you have to have it because you have to have a job you have to have a way to to survive but you're a bad person for being okay with that because you've inherited yeah. everything that you have off of the bloodshed of mm. innocent indigenous people therefore your entire existence is a blight so what you should do now is uh protest on behalf of people half a world away yeah and and then you can when, be redeemed when it gets to be too much you can just take another ssri given to you by pfizer mm -hmm. before you get another <laughs> shot brought to you by pfizer i'm starting to sound like what is this, IRL? You're, you is are. This? You are starting to sound like IRL. The Manic Mustache said, Brett, get the bootleg Cheetos from Mexico. Fire-er. fire, -er. fire -er. I'll have to look for that. Pat the um, Plumber. I, okay, so I like the... Okay, so here's the other thing that I've been eating lately, if we're talking about junk food. One of the new things that people are making is like Mexican street corn flavored Cheetos and Mexican street corn flavored Pringles. Now, the Mexican... Street, well, they are made of... The Cheetos are made of corn. So the Mexican street corn flavored Cheetos just taste like bugles. If you've ever had bugles. I don't know if I have. Okay. I don't, uh, I recommend them. Okay. They're good. 
Um, Pat the Plumber said, eat biltong. It is far superior to jerky. I want to eat biltong tacos now. Mm. We have biltong here. I do eat it from time to time. We had a couple of different varieties. The Brooklyn biltong was not the best. It tasted kind of like iron if you tried it in conjunction <laughs> with like another kind. And like you got a taste tester. Eating that in a taco doesn't mm. seem like it would be easy. Shane H. Wilder said, well, I'm glad I'm not in the EU. We're proud to... Americans here. Anytime somebody brings up the royal family, Mark's safe from caring about the royal family since 1776. Owned. Epic style. Corey Anderson said, guest recommendations, Mr. Ballin, call me Chris, or the Super Carlin bros. I mean, Mr. Ballin's got like, what, 7 million? <laughs> He's got yeah, a lot like, of subscribers. Look, That'd I, be a hard get. It, it would be nice to ask somebody, but we cannot make any guarantees. I would like uh, Antonio Banderas and Daniel, Cr I, I just listing fame, like, I would like other famous people as well, as long as we're listing off uh, people that are very, very hard to get. The Manic Mustache said, Subway bread isn't recognized as bread in Ireland. It's cake. Yep, that is true. It's uh, confirmed. Guys, the scientists are, looked into it. Guys, we are almost to a third crisis party. I think we should do that because how could you not help us get to a third crisis party when there's a genocide going on halfway around the world? We're $26 away from the third crisis party right now. We could right save now. the world. We could save the world by you doing You can that. save everyone in Gaza just by giving us $26 right now. <laughs> this makes us sound really bad. Uh, yeah, well. Such is life. All right. All right. Uh, I'm just trying to say, that's, I love the, uh, it seems like food always initiates a healthy debate. Maybe it's not healthy, but. Uh, it's not, it's anything certain, but healthy. A certain debate. level of debate. An unhealthy people, debate. Right? Uh, plenty of fish is lol, uh, ball and isn't coming. Yes, uh, I do not think so as well. <laughs> uh, let the, uh, allegedly, Rocky says, let them eat Subway bread. That, yeah, that's a revolutionary It's act. cake mostly because of the sugar in the, uh, in the yoga mat. Can you imagine if you, if it was your birthday and someone gave you Subway bread and put a candle in it? Like, I'm sorry, it's not actually cake. I'm down. It's, it's, I'm down. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I, I could literally eat just Subway white bread with like cheese. Subway is just not good. Does I anyone actually go to Subway these days? I haven't eaten I, Subway in a decade. Like, if you actually go to Subway or Arby's in 2024, I am worried about you. And I can't go to Arby's now either for the week. And I haven't been to an Arby's since I've been out here, but I think there's one around here, so maybe I'll go next week. Don't do that. I'm going to do it. Don't do it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do take, it. No, what you should do is take a picture of it before you eat it and post it on X. So then that, everyone will know what kind of slop you're eating. And I'll be like... I don't care. Fuck <laughs> you guys. <laughs> Fuck you. That's all I'll say. Like, okay. I'll, I'll post it with a middle finger. Like, <laughs> like with the chili cheese burrito. I'll have to have a, a, like, yeah. somebody else take the photo because I will have the, bur the, the, the meat thing in one hand because it's not a burger. It's just a, a roast it's beef disgusting. sandwich. It's barely, it's barely a sandwich. And then flipping it off and then say, somebody else be like, hey, you, like sit somebody over there eating. And I'll be like, could you take a picture for me really quick? Okay, They'd be hold, like, hold okay. the camera like this. And I'll be like this. Yeah. <laughs> you ever see that video? of the guy who proposed to his girlfriend at KFC and then became a big deal because some everybody was making fun of him. I thought he proposed at Waffle House. No, it was, it was KFC. And what happened was it turned out that that's where they went on their first date. It was actually super sweet. And then oh. all of these companies stepped up to donate to the wedding because he was getting dragged online by some elitist prick. Oh, he was getting hate for yeah. it. Yeah. Well, it's because somebody did the thing where they, they're a snob and they take a picture and they're not part of the group, so. Well, okay, if you do your proposal in public, I think it's safe to assume that someone might take a picture. Okay, that's, right, that's fair, right? Someone might take a picture if you're trying to like, you know, if you're making any kind of spectacle. He was mocked for proposing at KFC, but the internet found them and gave them their dream wedding. You love to see it. That's okay? a wholesome story. You love to see it. Uh, he proposed to his wife uh, midway through their meal at KFC restaurant in South Africa. Since the video was posted by a Twitter user in November, the video has been shared more than 25,000 times using the hashtag KFC proposal. Strangers and brands from across the country were so moved by the proposal. What they were moved by was a chance for well, great look, advertising. Now, but now what people are going to do is they're going to fake proposals at all these different fast food restaurants hoping to get handouts. Uh, then if, if one person gets a free wedding, then everyone wants one. Audi says, these honeymoon destinations look far. Someone needs to drive them. We got you. 
<laughs> they gave them a free honeymoon too? Yes. Ah, oh, damn. You love it. You love to see it. KFC got involved, of course. Did you ever see the story about like, so um, the, the KFC Twitter account only follows 11 people. It's all five Spice Girls and six guys named Herb. 11 herbs and spices. Got it. Uh, yeah. And the first person that pointed it out got like a painting from KFC. I don't like the whole viral marketing. Quirky. Yeah. Fast I mean, this was, food. this was like a decade ago. Thing. Yeah. It was a long yeah. time ago. Yeah. It was like still new. It, then. it was, it was, it might have been longer than a decade ago now. But Pat the was, Plumber said, I approve of Brett eating anything. Thumbs well, up. If I don't eat, then I die and I can't do the show, I guess, which might be good for some people, but other people might miss me. Perhaps. What if Maybe Brett? One or two people. What if Brett ate a person? You would support that? Okay, so here's the thing. I've been seeing all sorts of lame um, intellectual articles being written now about cannibalism because of everything. They're they're trying. I'm hating. saying they're trying yeah. to normalize cannibalism, and I said they're doing predictive programming in Hollywood films that have themes of cannibalism and, in order to prepare us. For what's coming. And, and Army I, Hammer is like, it's my yeah, time! Army Hammer is going to be the the cultural ambassador for cannibalism. I'm telling you right now. He's going to be like, look, guys, I was in on this before it was cool. Look, I he's like, when I, when I was born, the first movie my parents showed me was Cannibal Holocaust. And I knew that day that what I was Wait, going to be the rest of my life. Who was in the, the Timothy Chalamet cannibalism movie? Uh, it was like bones and all. Yeah, I don't remember who he was. It's in literally place. about him being a cannibal. They're trying to make this like normal. They're trying to normalize yeah. cannibalism for when we have food scarcity in this country. My favorite meme of all time is this meme of Fox Mulder. He's got the coat over his shoulder. It says, we've normalized enough. It's time to paranormalize. That's a, I like that. <laughs> That's clever. <laughs> High Vulture 75 said, Mary, what's your beef with Arby's? They're curly fries slap. They, okay, but the, here's the thing. If you do hate Arby's and you don't want to go there for the curly fries, the curly fries are good. The Arby sauce is good. The curly fries at Sheets are decent. Above average. Why does it matter that they're curly fries? Because that's a reason to go there. They're good. But just get, fr like, why does the shape of it matter? Oh, it does. Uh, they season them differently, too. Okay. But but the sh it does matter, okay? It's oh, kind of no. like when, 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 mm -hmm. when, the, when the whole discourse was going on last week at the end of the week about racist Advil. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Somebody's like, how do you like your Advil hot dog or hamburger? Because there's, like, different generics, that are, ones that are long this way and some that are short. <laughs> oh. He's like, how do you like your Advil hot dog or hamburger? And I'm like, personally, I prefer... Uh, hamburger Advil, but that's how I, that's because that's where I find my generic ibuprofen. I wish they had it in gummies, right? I, I, ibuprofen gummies, is that yeah. a thing? Carnell said PCC guest request. Get Aiden Paladin on the show. I believe she was on Timcast at one point, but I remember she had an interest in talking pop culture. Yeah, she does. Uh, she's uh, very up on comic books and comic book lore. And I, look, back when I had more time, I watched a lot of Aiden Paladin videos. And of course, all it does is make you feel stupid because she's so smart and she's very, very intelligent. Um, but I would love to be able to talk to her about her video where she dissects the idea of... Um, inner monologue which is like th that video is like f probably five or six years old now about npcs um, about basically. yeah about about npcs and stuff like that yeah. but she's she's great she did do irl once and if i remember correctly i mean she didn't put herself on camera that much in her video no yeah certainly... i remember like so when she at did irl channel, that was a big deal was that the first time that she showed her face i don't online? know i think she'd done it before but it was one of the it was probably one of the bigger platforms she'd been on yeah she's yeah great. i remember that mm-hmm a lot of people are like they don't they don't face reveal, so we can't invite them on here unless they want to wear a mask, which would kind of kill the vibe. I think I'm gonna have a I'm gonna do one day. I'm gonna just do a face reveal and pull this off, and just, I'm actually wearing a mask. Shaney Twilder said they sell curly fries other places. The sheets ones are pretty good. Not gonna lie. The last of my kind said Arby's brown sugar BLT is fire. Never had it, but it doesn't sound horrible. Ben Tomsky said, because you want normal fries with a few accidental curlies thrown in, that's the dream. It's kind of like, uh, it's like when they give you that, that um, onion ring, the couple onion rings in your fries, and you feel like you've been given a gift. That they did it on purpose they to make you feel purpose. blessed. They do that at Five Guys, too. Yes. So at Five Guys. It's intentional. When you get that overflowing bag of fries, that is a psyop. 
Mm-hmm. It is. It is baked into the cost, and everyone knows that because it costs freaking house mortgage. To you're, get the house. you're literally to get- spending $25 yeah. for a burger, fries, and, and a shake. And everyone knows that it's outrageous. It, it literally costs you the down payment on a house to go to Five Guys now. Literally. Uh, so when you get that big bag of fries in the small cup, you know. <laughs> Then the cup is like half full. I did see a great one where a, a guy posted, it was like a girl like purposely buying a bra that was a size too small and says, same energy. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Same energy. Kingswell said, uh, he sent $20. Thank he you. said, Bucky's is the place, barbecue and cheap gas. We don't have Bucky's out here though. We have Wawa and Sheets. Yeah, and, we don't have uh, that. Royal Farms. Dave Collins said the critical drinker would be a great guest on PCC. I does would, he live in the U.S. He though? He does not. Like that's see, these are like some of the practical issues. Like if they don't live in the U.S., that's a, and he that, visits, much harder to accomplish. He visits the U.S., but it's very hard logistically to make stuff like that happen. Yeah. Like it, honestly, like uh, one of the things that's been great is like we've had a lot of our own guests that have also ended up doing culture war. Uh, that might be one of the ones where they he's such a big guest that they might need to get him for culture war in IRL and then hopefully we would be able to co-opt that's a lot of content and for one person I know but... uh, Eric July did all three in one day that's a trip that's uh I've done I've done culture war then this and then IRL it's not the... I still I really want Vivek yep I really want to get Vivek to on not the show. talk politics at all yeah just like so uh just don't filibuster at all. I want to. Okay, so here's the thing. I want to have Vivek on to talk about what he thinks of just pearly things, and I want to have just pearly things on to find out what to she talk about, about Vivek? Marvel. <laughs> Wait, why would Vivek talk about pearl? I, I just want to. I, I wonder what his opinions are on random internet issues. Okay. Because I mean, he's very internet literate. I, I would assume that he's not favorable to pearl. How would he come up with that perfectly crafted Vivek answer, though? He's it, always yeah. Good at, he's like got I want to. Most... I want to hear the the way that he fields each question in like the most political way possible. All right, guys. Uh, and we got the, we got the crisis party. So you guys care about us, even though there's a, a genocide. No, they don't care about us. They care about Gaza. That is, that is what it is. Don't get All it right. twisted. Guys, see, I keep like, look at this. It takes like two times to hit the button. The same thing happened earlier. You were talking. It was like stuck on me. Yeah. And the button wouldn't switch. All right, one more here from, you got that one from Jen. Jen Hoove, speaking of food, yesterday Tim mentioned that Little Caesars is your best option uh, in one of his videos, and now I feel seen, haha. I love Little Caesars. I don't have any problem with Little Caesars. Here's the thing, not just Little Caesars pizza, Italian cheese bread from Little Caesars absolutely okay, slaps I, I hate more to break than it pizza. to you, pizza is cheese bread. Well, it doesn't have sauce on it. This is just a very, very minute difference, it's, honestly. It's, but, but it's gar, but it's garlic, so okay. it's different. It's it's seasoned differently. Okay. Italian cheese bread, but of course you do dip it in the sauce. Which yeah, you dip it in the sauce. It's pizza. literally pizza. It's like it's a different delivery system. Okay, guys. Okay. <laughs> you guys. Know, would you hit the like button on this video, please, and subscribe to this channel if you have not done so already? I love it when you guys indulge us talking about the most random of things. It's always so much fun. Mary, let everyone know where they can find you. Yes, you can send me validation on Instagram at Mary Archived, or you can send me hate on X. That is also Mary Archived. If you guys wanted to like keep Mary from eating Chinese food. Now would be the time to do it. No, give, oh, give, I'm dying. If you would like to follow me, you can follow me on Instagram and Twix at Brett Dasovic on both of those platforms. I should do the Dane thing, and I will spell it for you now. B R E T T. D-A-S-O-V-I-C. Uh, this show is here five days a week, Monday through Friday, 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That is noon Pacific. Amazon Music, Apple Podcasts, Pandora, and Spotify, if you'd like to listen rather than watch. If you'd like to follow us on social media, we are on Twix at PopCulture underscore show, Facebook, and not TikTok at Pop Culture Crisis. Oh, by the way, I got an email from TikTok the other day saying... Speak out about the TikTok, about the possibility <laughs> of a TikTok ban with your voice. I'm like, how the- Oh, you, my voice? My voice? My how voice the, that you took away from me when you banned Pop Culture Crisis on TikTok? That voice? co parter TikTok. It's your own fault. Yeah, we're not going to be advocating for TikTok at all. Instagram, at Pop Culture Crisis Pod. Guys, we will be back with another episode tomorrow. We'll see you then. Bye. Bye.